just got feeling free and just like Elon part the Tesla. You ain't got no motion, you can't stand up in my session. I said, Carisha, please, do, cause she too messy. Bitch, fuck my dog behind my back, but I ain't stressing. You wanted the game, you should've just said it. We would've blessed you, should've just said it. That shit got messy. Smoking exotic shit, what an exotic bitch. Cause she too messy Dude. Fuck them bro boys with Get out my section Get out my section Pull them muscle God damn Too much flexion Damn Caught them in traffic On the accident We pressing Got them Smoking Zaza Every second I be stretching If they ain't trying to be them Fuck it Won't you stretch them Do that They wipe their nose For that tissue God bless them Wipe it I dropped them for a perp I call that shit Cause Weber Drink They wipe their nose For that tissue God bless them Wipe it I dropped them for a perp I call that shit Cause Weber Drink I'm the huncho, bitch, I'm about my cheddar Little hoe keep going outside, little bitch do better bitch. She want me to hit it, put my blicky on the dresser Got you, feeling free and just like Elon, pop the Tesla I be, oh, You ain't got no motion, you can't stand up in my session I said, Carisha, please, do, cause she too messy please. Bitch, fuck my dog behind my back, but I ain't stressing Not at all. You wanted the game, you should've just said it, we would've blessed it Should've just said it, now she got messy Seconds, never let a bitch stretch me Before the microphone, I made a milli out the celly I love to see her walk away because it look like jelly Went from zero to 60 in two seconds on Pirelli I'm always at the gym, so I got a diamond fetish Smoking on the pill while I'm counting up this letter Stack it to the sky, I believe that I can fly Told a man in the mirror that you want hell of a guy If I can do it, so can you, but shit, who the hell am I? Who said it's lonely yet to talk to them? That's a motherfucking lie I bought my homeboys with me Ballin' in South Memphis like Dubai Rose Roses back to back to back to back Oh my God I mean that shit Hold up, let me finish Wait. She so fine, I put it in and tried to touch her kidneys ah. I'm too motherfucking rich to go and eat at Denny's what? But fuck that, I'm in a Jack Purdy drive through in a Bentley hey. Front seat got my semi Oh shit, I got plenty Playing with these M's, but I started out with pennies A hundo in my skinnies Louis 13, shots of Top Chef Remy Grew up thugging just like who was Deuce, baby Jimmy Hey, hey, hey yeah. I grew up thugging on my South Memphis rug rack. Rug rack, get trippin' on my knee, these bitches love it. Trip. When I pop out, I got big gigantic stupid racks. Big racks. Fuck a job, I beat the block, I had to flip a pack. Self made nigga, I'm hustling. Can't go back to the days when I ain't had nothing. But I won't forget about the drugs. I was just stacking the racks in the trap on my shoe, but now I still they seen in the dump. My rug keep sending them lows, and I just keep flushing them. Call them back, I need another one. Another one. Round, round town with a pocket full of jacks. I stack up them hundreds and pitches. Keep me a Drago, I got a banana clip and an A, I came with titties. 23 shots in my glass, kinda can't. Double my cup, so you know what I'm saying. Really having this shit, nigga, no, I ain't tripping. Can't ride the mob, nigga, I'm never flipping. Yeah, I'm giant. Yeah, I ain't never flip, flip. I don't think none of y'all niggas flipping yeah. empty. Most of the pack them get. Yeah. And I ain't worried about none of these little broke ass niggas. All uh-huh. these bitches, bitch. Everything a nigga do out here, yeah. these streets they just gon' mimic. Mimic. Seven five hundred for a shoulder, yeah. nigga gon' pull. Ain't no gimmick. No I'ma call six point zero and six point zero. Yeah, they mimic. Mimic. That nigga really have motion. Nah. I just stir the whole damn mimic. Mimic. Make a play with Whitey. Yeah. End up build up make feeling. Feeling. Really made a killer. Uh-huh. Killer. Off the back from ceiling. Ceiling. Ever been in love? Cause uh-huh. I can't really catch. No feeling, no feeling. Never had no nine to five, cause uh-huh. I love drug dealing. Drug dealing up in that field, a nigga going ass with the wheeler, wheeler. Beat the block up to the dope, all gone. gone. Yeah, trapping real, real yeah. hard off a of two phone, both on. Hey, Norm Tone Bite, Norm Tone Bite, Norm Tone Bite. We back, Ratchet Gang. We back with another one. We back with another banger. Get the likes up. Look, you might have forgot. Hell. They might have forgot, but you already know 
It's the king. Too loyal, no, I'm tone back. Ratchet TV. Hey, I y'all already know, man. Y'all already know. Get the likes up if you in the building. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Tap that notification bell so you can get the drop whenever I drop. All right, so boom. Man, 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 man. We got to talk, Ratchet Gang. We got to chop it up. Tonight, we got to talk about the Mo 3 case. We back on that 3 case. We right back, spin the block. We got to chop it up about three. Drop them gorillas in the chat. Long live Melvin Noble. Long live Mo 3, y'all. Long live Mo 3. <clears throat> we definitely got to chop it up. And uh, salute on that super chat, guys, son. I appreciate that 20 piece McNugget. That's how you start off the show with a 20 piece McNugget. Not sure what the hell happened last night, but we back at it, gang. Salute says Showtime, gang. Get the likes up. I appreciate you guys, son. Salute, salute, salute. I appreciate that 20 piece McNugget. Salute. So, as we proceed to give them what they need, you know, man, everybody been. <laughs> I be I be running around like, you know what I'm saying, whoop de whoop de whoop. You know, I be in the bushes and shit. But I just be seeing a lot of fugazi ass bullshit, bro. And it's a lot of follow the leader. It's a whole lot of, you know what I'm saying, go along to get along out there. Especially when it comes to the Mo 3 shit. When it gets around Dallas, it just gets real, it gets real iffy and, and when it, it's all a play when it comes to Dallas, bro. I got Dallas, y'all be on that bullshit, man. So I don't fuck with detail like that, bro. I mean, I got love for the city, man. But hey, it is what it is. Y'all be out here play running. Who child? All right, so y'all remember, I've always stood very stiff no matter what the fuck personal issues I've had with whoever, wherever. I've always been a, a dude that always kept it a buck, right? <clears throat> so I say that to say salute to Drea for being a member to, for 14 months glad to be back and feeling better i miss everyone let's chop it up salute dre i appreciate you thank you for uh coming back salute i'm glad you got to feeling uh better salute to you i appreciate you for being uh, in the chat all right so <clears throat> let's do it like this i've always stood stiff on something man when it comes to the mo3 case i've always said in the very beginning and you can even drop the first name of the person in the chat what what lady would you say who had the most credible information i'm talking about as soon as the mo3 case popped off we talking about right when right when mo3 died like within the first couple of months who had the most valuable <clears throat> information in the mo3 case they said queen 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 I see queen, 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 queen. I see a whole bunch of queens in the building. Hold on, thugs. Hold on. Let's get let's get to it. We got to chop it up tonight. Allegedly, allegedly, and everything I say is alleged, and it's all under the Fair Use Act. And you can see the Fair Use disclaimer in the description of this video. And in the description of all my videos, this is just for entertainment and educational purposes only. This is just to educate my people on what we've been covering over here. Like I said, it's all under the Fair Use Act, and you can see the Fair Use disclaimer in the description of this video. And everything I say is alleged. Allegedly. Allegedly, y'all. But we got to definitely chop it up, man. We definitely got to chop it up because when it first popped off, man, Queen had, she struck gold. I just got to keep it all the way a big buck. Queens, Queens don't make she she struck gold when this happened. She did this reading with Mo3 prior to him being unalived, right? And as she does this, y'all gotta go back and think about it. Who put Mo3 onto Queen uh in the first place? Who put Mo3 onto Queen? Can somebody in the building tell me who was the one that put Mo3 on to her in the first place? How did Mo3 get that original reading? And then remember, Rain tried to spin the narrative and Rain tried to say Mo3 was having nightmares and he never thought the same and things changed after that uh, reading he got. But then 
you go to find a salute to Kelly Mack on that uh, five piece. I appreciate you, Kelly. Salute on that five piece. I appreciate you. Salute, salute, salute. Make sure y'all support the channel tonight, man. Send a super chat, super sticker, or a dollar sign Ratchet TV cash app. You know what I'm talking about? Salute. They said Jackie, the girls, the girls. I think they missing something. I know. I know somebody who could get it, but it'd be cheating. I could tell Big Sapphire who put them on. Who Big Sapphire, who put them on? No, you gotta go back and think. It, it, it wasn't Jack. It was originally. There you go. There you go. Now it ended up being Jackie in the end. Jackie was the go-to. Because Jackie was, well, we're not going to get there. So you jumped the gun. But you you were right halfway. You were right halfway. But Ashley, Ashley is the one who put him on. Mo3, baby mama. You see, Mo3 didn't even fuck with his baby mama. Let's keep this all the way a big buck. I'm sick of Ashley clout chasing ass running around YouTube. I did not tell y'all that bitch wants to be on YouTube. I kept telling y'all over and over that, man, that girl trying to be a YouTuber, man. Y'all don't be listening to me. I be trying to tell you, man, these people trying to be YouTubers. They are talking, if you can address her as, who told me to do? Man, I'm going to call her Queen. That's what we know her as. You see, me and Queen ended up running into some issues. Me and Queen ended up running to, into some issues. And it's neither here nor there. Because you know why? I'm going to tell you why. It doesn't even matter what it... <coughs> it doesn't matter what issues me and her ran into. Hold on, y'all. CBD got me. Hold on. It doesn't matter. Because it ain't about me. And it ain't about her. We got information that, that people need in the end. It's, it's information that needs to be given out this information being hidden there are players that are involved in mo3's demise that are running around making a living off of mo3's name <clears throat> rainwater said in an interview how could i why would i had set mo3 up when i made more money when he was dead than i mean excuse me i made more money when he's alive than when he died rain you're a fucking liar bro you are a fucking lie. You never, you never made a million dollars when Mo Three was alive. You became a millionaire when Mo Three died off of his name. The death of Mo Three gave you every bit of motherfucking clout you ever tasted in your life. You were nothing before Mo Three died. Let's keep this all the way a book. You never made no money when Mo Three. You can't prove nothing. All you do is get on the internet and run your big ass mouth. You go in here with them big ass teeth and run your mouth. That's all you do, right? Drop the teeth in the chat. I want to see teeth emojis in the chat. Salute, Kelly Mack. I appreciate you. Man, man, man. Now, <laughs> now, Rainwater and a lot of other YouTubers have been running around and, and they've been, you know what I'm saying, trying to cover up Mo3's death. They all are aligned with the killers. <clears throat> And I've never been one to say Queen didn't have the a lot of the most useful information in the beginning. Because <clears throat> it all started with her. If you go back, you just got to give the flowers out. She had a lot of useful information. And there was another reader named Dark Rose who had a, a whole lot of useful information in the Mo3 case. And they gave the whole drop on what really happened. They just got spooked and some shit happened along the way. A lot of plays got ran. They ended up whatever, whatever. and in the midst of everything, I had a fallout with you know what I'm saying several people over the Mo3 case. And it doesn't even matter because it's, it should be water under the bridge because it's at the end of the day, it's only about justice for Mo3. This ain't about me. This ain't about nobody else. So we can't be selfish in this situation. Mo3 kids is out here getting robbed by their family. I pulled up all the paperwork. There ain't no paperwork that I didn't show y'all to show the mama got shoved out the way. The baby mamas took over and in in it is what it is from there. Them kids ain't seeing shit. I don't care what they tell you. Mo3 broke. I don't give a fuck what they tell they, they They banking off this next Mo3 album that ain't going to come out. Didn't I tell y'all it wasn't no music? Y'all said I was lying. Didn't I tell y'all it wasn't no music coming out from no Mo3? Mo3 ain't got shit coming out. I didn't I, I warned y'all. 
I said, it ain't no music coming out. It rain got up here. Yeah, y'all get ready. That Mo3 finna drop. Man, Mo3 ain't dropping shit. You'll be lucky to ever hear a new Mo3 song ever again. I told y'all, ain't no Mo3 album finna come out. No time soon. I doubt it ever happens. They still trying to get that damn music from old boy. But it is what it is. Everything I said has been credible and right down the line. They just tried to use my information and kind of drown me with running plays and smear campaigns and all kind all types of shit, man. And they doing the same thing right now with Queen. And I'm just watching the shit like, bro, go back to the beginning of the case. Everybody was saying this lady was right on point. Everybody was saying it wasn't nobody that wasn't saying, man, the lady got credible information. Though. Like Everybody was saying nobody thought she was clout chasing. It wasn't until the girls got up there and started uh, steering the narrative whenever they got caught up because the person on the other end of that phone is Rain. Go look right now. Rain is clicked up with Jackie and the same. He with all them. Jackie got the phone call that said your, your, your friend, your partner dead. That wasn't go yay yo. And that was rainwater. I'm convinced now that on the person on the other end of that phone was rainwater. He called them and he was on that damn live. Rainwater was on that live. That's why Rainwater and Queen got this beef to this day because she know that was rain on the other end of that phone. Everybody know there was rain on the other end of that phone in that live. Now go back and look. Jackie and Rain, cool. You see the, the little 88 chick. She tied in. with He he got her on payroll. Then he got the little Calvin uh, do-boy ass dude that want to be from Houston but from Garland. Man, this the shit is getting sad. To watch this shit, to watch everybody go out sad, clout chasing in behind Mo three, and then to see how all of y'all are aligned in the in the plot to set them up because Jackie set the whole fucking play up. Jackie set the whole. Everybody know Jackie set that play up. Why you think everybody ran off to Miami and shit and left her ass behind? She set the whole shit up. That's why she got left in Dallas. She set up Mo3. She helped plot and set up Mo3. Then she run around with the little 88 bitch. And then you got rainwater over. He got them on payroll. Look at fast forward to today. Then who, who else is up there? Ashley. And who's a common denominator? Rainwater. Rainwater is the one who set the whole fucking play up. I keep trying to tell y'all, man. Rainwater trying to he he just keep trying to steer the narrative and he doing everything in his power. Hold on, man. We're not. I, I got some shit for y'all tonight. Cause I actually, I actually tapped in with her earlier. I actually tapped in with her earlier. And I'm gonna let y'all hear this part. I'm gonna let y'all hear this shit real quick. You know, fair use going into effect. So I'm gonna have to chop this shit up. But you know, I don't trust nobody on YouTube. So fair use will be in effect. But I just want to react to this shit real quick. Cause I was on here. This is my voice on this shit. So you know what I'm saying? I just wanna I just wanna show y'all something real quick. What's up, Ratchet? How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing just wonderful. Just wanna let you know I'm on my live. Yeah, so I went over there and I was trying to tell her, like, hey, I need to chop it up with you. And they was like, nah, man, ratchet over here. We'll do, do, let's get him up. I was like, man, why your mind's blocked me up out your chat, man? I ain't even said nothing over it. I was, I was trying to, you know what I'm saying, chop it up with you. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Chop it up with Big Ratchet. Let's go. I didn't know you were in the chat. Yeah, I was telling you, hit me up, man. Let me at you real quick. I see these motherfuckers trying to do these same bitch ass people on YouTube running the same plays for Queen. Yeah. And that's me telling her, I'm watching everything that's going on. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be in no chat tonight. I ain't going to hit no links and shit like that. I'm watching everything they're doing to you right now. And I see exactly what it is. Mo 3's trial is coming up. They already made you look like a fool. They're trying to make you look like a fool once again. I say, I said it and I stand on it. The information in the very beginning of the Mo3 case, you probably are the most credible person in that shit at the very beginning. 
Now, what happened after that? A lot of plays and shit and people getting to you. And I'm hearing about this Atlanta trip. And from what I'm hearing about the Atlanta Atlanta trip, I'm hearing that the same. And I don't know if this is true. Now, you we can chop it up at a later date and you can confirm or deny or choose not to even say nothing about this. But they saying y'all know the same witch lady that was in the takeoff case. The same witch lady from the takeoff case that was with the Migos. They saying that's the lady that kind of put some shit on her and tried to put a hit on her. Allegedly. I don't know, man. We'll get to that shit at a later date. But they saying that, that same lady is the person she went to go visit in Atlanta. Migos are in Atlanta. Put it, you know what I'm saying? Drop the gems. I don't know if y'all following me, but allegedly. But let's continue. We do. They said they just told me that you have a live set up against me tonight. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. Yesterday, they lied. I just made a live to say Queens don't make this. Or they're just me talking shit. Because you gave up a lot of information in that shit, which is useful information, and it's the same information I've been saying. So I'd be saying I'm a snitch too, right? Yeah. So- All right. So like I like I was saying up there, people are. A lot of people kept saying, "Oh, he got a live. He finna go against you." Now I'm not. I'm not with the go along, get along people. I'm not one of those people who are gonna jump on no bandwagon and start going against nobody. There is nothing for me to go against. Whenever I, I don't care about my personal issues with this person, it does. It doesn't matter what issues I had with this person, because it's not about me and it's not about her at the end of the day. So whatever issues we had, to me, they're swept under the rug already because it's nothing personal. Because I don't even know you to have a personal issue with you. Now you get on the internet and just say some wild shit about me. I've been on the internet long enough to know I that's just some internet shit. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Let bygones be bygones. At the end of the day, it's about Mo3 and it's about his kids. So I don't got nothing against nobody. Like I, I'm hitting I'm hitting this person up to let her know, like, hey, I'm watching. But let's continue. So it, it, it don't even matter what the fucking title says. Okay. Just know a lot of our shit lining up to the same shit and it come back to the beginning of the Mo3 case. And I still stand on what the fuck I always said. And I stand on that. And I said it right there. I'll say it to her on her live, whoever live. I, I didn't I don't give a damn because I've always said that at the very beginning of the Mo3 case, this woman has some of the most credible information. And I I still feel like that live with them sisters told that really was the most that was the most details that we had at the beginning. And it, it was going back listening to it today, you start to see this motherfucker was on point and, and that's, those are facts let's continue right absolutely absolutely i just thought y'all I, I figured you saw what was going on so and i saw you call me um you did you call me from another number two okay 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 because i have this one saved um so that's how i knew it was you um yeah, I figured that that's why you was calling because you saw what was going on. I, I, it's funny to me. I don't even know what the fuck. You know, I mind my business, Ratchet. And like I said, this ain't it ain't nothing personal. This is just some YouTube shit. This is what they do. This is what the Mo Three sector motherfuckers do. They, they, you know, you know what I'm saying. They all attach themselves to whatever is the clout, and they, you know, what I'm saying. But none of these people have ever wanted to get any justice for Mo Three. The same people that. Are, are running these plays they ain't trying to get no justice for mo3 like i said they they align themselves with the same people who took mo3 out these people align themselves with the same exact people who took mo3 out let's continue no, but yeah, you've been staying out the way which as you should not you know i understand why but uh you know that we we on the same page when it comes to what happened to mo3 and that some of that shit you said Took me back. I know I listened to your live that you had. That's that's really what the live title was about. You know what I mean? I heard everything you said about the the Beto shit. I caught all this shit. And let me stop right there. And when, what I was trying to tell her right there was, and she knows what I'm talking about. Now I'm gonna be real with y'all. I've never told y'all this before, but I had a conversation with Beto behind the scenes. And I've gave y'all this information that he gave me. But B don't know some shit. And I'm just going to leave it at that. But she know that I know that she know that, 
You know what I'm saying? What I'm talking about. She know that I know that she know what she talking about. And she know, I mean, well, y- y'all get what the fuck I'm saying. She know what the fuck I'm talking about right now. She know what the, exactly, I know that she know. I know she know what I'm talking about right now. You know what I'm saying? It ain't no no way around it because Beto gave me some information that I've already gave y'all. I just never told y'all where it came from. And she, the look on her face kind of tell me she know what I was talking about when I when I brought up Beto and I said we we are on the same page because I didn't I didn't have some conversations with these people and I know that your information is on point and I ain't on no clout chasing shit. I don't got a clout chase with this shit because it's some conversations I didn't have with these people that don't nobody know about. And some of the shit you said just let me know, like, bro, she's not fucking Catholic because I know what the fuck you're talking about. All this shit you're saying, I know what the fuck you're talking about because I know all the shit. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Um. I think that's a... But you see right there, look, look at her reaction. It's telling you. She know I know I know I'm looking because she know what the fuck I'm talking about when I said Beto. Because Beto and me had a conversation behind the scenes, and it was some in, it was some information that was shocking. I'm just gonna leave it like that. It was some shocking information. I've given y'all the information. I just never told y'all where it came from. But let me tell you, Beto ain't innocent of a lot of shit. He ain't he ain't he ain't a, a innocent camper in this shit. Let's continue. Private conversation, though. Listen to what she said. That's a private conversation. Listen, hold on. Let's go back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard everything you said about the Beto shit. I caught all this shit. Because it's some conversations I didn't have with these people that don't nobody know about. And some of the shit you said just let me know, like, bro, she's not fucking Catholic. Because I know what the fuck you're talking about. All this shit you're saying, I know what the fuck you're talking about. Because I know all the shit. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Um, I think that's a private conversation, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see? <laughs> that, yeah, I bet it is. That's a very private conversation, ain't it? That's one of them conversations you probably don't you you probably don't want me to get too deep into on live because when it comes to the Beto shit, you see her face changed. Like I said, some of the information that she's giving out. What she gave out the other night that I I definitely know what the fuck she's talking about. And the feds been watching that dude and everybody else in this situation. That's why everybody got hit in this situation. Everybody. Let's continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I'm just saying that we need to chop it up. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, when you get off live, hit me up. All right. All right. All right. And that look told me everything I needed to know right there. As soon as I got done chopping it up with her, like I said, I hit her phone up personally. Because this ain't, like I said, at the end of the day, it don't got nothing to do with me and you getting on the internet and and throwing shots at each other. Because that's all the fuck it was, was me and her getting on the internet and doing a whole bunch of internet shit. Okay. I, I don't mind that. Ain't nobody get touched. Nobody got harmed. We all good. Everything is everything is cool. Everything is cope aesthetic. I ain't doing no tripping about shit. I told y'all I'm protected. I don't I ain't I don't I don't worry about anything. So you know what I'm saying? I forgive. It's all good. It's all good, Ratchet Gang. So I do need to like I said, me and her do need to chop it up and we overdo because some of the things that Queen has been saying kind of let let me know that you know what I'm saying my information is on point. We right on the money when it comes to that Mo3 shit over here. We right on the money. So like I said, y'all gotta go back to the beginning of this shit. Hold on. Let me let me get in my let me get in this shit real quick. Let me get in this shit real quick. Hold on. One second, y'all. Let me share my screen. All right, let's go. Let's chop it up real quick. Oh, listen, 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 I ain't gonna have no filter for none. Of, now I, I know both of y'all get your partners. Uh, he was a straight character to me. Yeah, it is. I'm just be real with you. I don't know why none of y'all niggas told. No, I don't know why none of y'all niggas told he wasn't hotter than no three. None oh. of that shit. Y'all ain't tell. Listen, listen, listen. Y'all didn't tell. Y'all didn't tell him none of that. Like, bro, what did you talking about? You not hotter than no three? 
None of that. I, one time, Yayo pulled up to the studio with Mo3. And Yayo was six, six deep. And Yayo came in like he been a check three. And three pulled him to the side and looked him in his eye. And Yayo blamed everything on Nana. Then the next time three seen Yayo, he acted a fool at the club in Fort Worth. And, said, and then then came in character mode when he got home and said, I made you run out the club. Like, oh, just drive talking, you lying, right? Y'all talking, talking about what? Hold on, y'all talking about what? Hold on, hold on, dude. Listen, go, go that, that day, I don't know the exact conversation. I wasn't there, but I know three Yayo, Nana, and Nana said whatever, what was said, but that's what. So again, everybody's snitching. You see how he's giving up information on Go Yayo and Nana and Go Back. Queen's Domain actually said in that damn interview, or excuse me, in the damn uh, live she did about number seven. Mo3 was asking questions about number seven. Mo3 was asking questions about Beto. Mo3 wanted to know what was going on with these people because Mo3 knew that these people were trying to kill him, allegedly. Mo3 already knew that. So before we get into the new information, we gotta, we gotta give y'all the background, man. We gotta give y'all the, we gotta cover it different over here. Salute to who is that? Salute to Binky for that ten piece. I thought y'all forgot about me. You know, after last night, I thought y'all forgot about me. Throw a dog a bone. I appreciate you, Binky. Salute for that ten piece. I appreciate you. Salute, salute, salute. Let's get to it. Mo three and Trap Boy Freddy came up in the Dallas rap scene together and were homies back in the day, but street beef split them apart and led to shootouts beatdowns, and murder in broad daylight. Before he hopped in the booth, Trap Boy Freddy had a crazy come up in Dallas. He was always getting in trouble and kicked out of school as a kid. But what he did at 14 was wild. According to rumors, Freddy wasn't happy with his Christmas gifts that year, so he decided to jump in the trenches and start hustling for his own bread. He got his own apartment at 14 with his homie and went hard in the streets. Back then, he was running with an infamous crew called DF Dub. DF Dub was putting heavy pressure on everyone else back in the day and some OGs taught Freddy how to move. But after dudes started getting killed and locked up, Freddy realized he didn't want to be clicked up like that anymore and started his own crew. Hustling paid off for a minute, but then things started catching up to him. Freddy got booked for the first time at 17, and at one point, he was wilding out so much that he got arrested 12 times in six months. He kept dodging the charges, so Freddy wasn't even thinking about switching up how he moved, but eventually he had to sit down for five months. Get the likes up, gang. We got to give y'all the background once again on this Mo3 case. Because we, we do got a lot of people over here who are new to the channel. They don't know about all this Mo3 shit. So before we even jump to all the new shit, man, we got to get to the, you know what I'm saying? We got to get to what we got to get to. Get the likes up, though, y'all. Salute, salute. And that's when Freddie decided to hop in the booth and start laying down tracks. Freddie's first projects came out in 2014, but he didn't really start going hard until 2017. And by the time he decided to rap full time, Mo3 was already coming up in Dallas. Mo3 had a crazy life in the city, too. He grew up seeing violence and poverty every day. And a lot of nights, he would have to sleep outside when the electricity at his mom's crib got shut off. Freddy's story about getting his own place at 14 just so he could hustle in the streets is crazy. But Mo3 got active at an even earlier age. Mo3 stole a gun from his cousin when he was 12 and carried it everywhere he went, even though he didn't have any ammo for it. Then at 14, he got hit with his first robbery charge and went through damn near every correctional facility in Dallas over the next few years. You know, Mo3 couldn't stay out of trouble. Throw them gorillas up in the chat. Mo3 couldn't keep his ass out of trouble, man. It was like Mo3 just had trouble following him every corner of his life. He just never could get it right. And it seemed like as soon as he had his opportunity, they set his ass up, man. Salute to Robbie Kennedy on that Tiny Thug membership. Salute, salute. According to Mo3, he was 15 when he started getting into shootouts. And he claimed he got in so many that he lost count. But besides busting at the ops, Mo3 was out there robbing people too, and at age 17, he got hit with four charges of aggravated robbery. Mo3 had put himself in a bad situation, but his case hurt his family too. His mama spent everything she had trying to fight the charges for him, and she ended up losing her house, car, and has to move in with her sister. After Mo3 got hit with a 10-year sentence, his pops asked him what the next move was after he got out. Mo told him he had no idea, because it wasn't like he had a lot of options. And that's when his dad told him to start rapping about the streets instead of living in them. He had already been rapping and singing his whole life. So when he got out after serving two years, Mo3 got to use his cousin's recording studio for free and started going hard in the booth. He dropped his first project in 2014 and picked up a lot of buzz off the rip. And after grinding in the game for a couple of years, he signed a deal with Epic Records. He also linked up with Trap Boy Freddy for the track Landlord before either one of them blew up. But it didn't take long for everything to start falling apart. 
If Mo 3 left Dallas behind right then, he'd probably still be alive today and taking over the game. But instead, he stayed in his hometown, and the drama started catching up to him. Again, Mo 3 had – when Mo 3 got knocked off out here, man, it, it was no reason Mo 3 should have been out here. Let alone Mo 3 should have never been nowhere near Oak Cliff. Let's just keep this all the way a buck, man. If you're from Dallas, you already know. I ain't saying Mo 3 a, a hoe. I ain't saying that at all. I'm just saying – the smoke that Mo three had in the in the in the stuff, but because you can't say this was just no internet shit. I mean, bodies dropped. There was there, there's a lot of bodies that dropped in behind this shit. There's more bodies than you even than y'all even know. It's a lot of people that died in behind this war out here in Dallas, man. So let's keep that all the way a buck, man. According to rumors, Mo had issues with another rapper named Goyeo for years, but it's not clear where it all started. In 2017, they allegedly ran into each other at a club, though. And at some point, shots started going off, and Mo3 got booked for hitting two people. The charges didn't stick, but Mo still got dropped from Epic Records over the situation. So instead of having a label to back him up and help guide him through the industry, Mo had to handle everything by himself. His name was already buzzing in Dallas, and it seemed like Mo3 was about to make it out on his own. But that's when old friends became enemies. Trap Boy Freddy linked up with Go Yayo and another Dallas rapper named Yellow Beezy for the track Pick 6, but left Mo3 off it. Mo said he was never worried about the track, but that's when the beef allegedly sparked between him and Freddy. What made the situation even more complicated was when Mo's homie, Roy Lee, started beefing with Yellow Beezy. Roy Lee was just a comedian, but he put hella pressure on Yellow Beezy all over social media. He was always calling him out for the fade. Then in 2018, someone shot Lee in the leg, and he tragically died a couple of weeks later. Long live Roy Lee, y'all. Long live Roy Lee. Salute to Crystal Cove for that honey bun. Honey bun, won't you do some for me? You said, I'm sick and was late, but I'm still here. RG4L, I appreciate you, Crystal Cove. Hope you feel better. Y'all dropped them flowers for Crystal in the chat. You know what I'm talking about? Salute to you. Hope you get better. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you. But uh, let's go. Someone said, Ratchet, you stay protected by who? The feds? Man, get your get your goofy ass on, dog. Why don't you pop out and find out, goofy? Let's get the likes up. Continue to get the likes up. Let's get back to this Mo three story, man. Nobody on the outside knows who killed Roy Lee, but a lot of people don't think it's a coincidence that Yellow Beezy got hit up just a few days later. Yellow was shot three times in a drive by, and Mo three allegedly dissed him over it on the track "Word Around Town" with the line "Word Around Town" that somebody got found thumped over in the car body stretched out on the ground and on the track 219 he sent more shots with in the city they talking they know what i did i hit up that rapper you made him famous yeah he barely made it but will not again so right there let me ask y'all a question do y'all feel like mo3 was antagonizing or you know say encouraging the beef does anybody hold mo3 accountable on his part and hold everybody to at what point do we got to say, bro, it could have been avoided on every side. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel like every, me personally, I feel like everybody could have avoided this shit. I feel like th before, this is before the bodies dropped. Everybody could have avoided it at one point. It just got to a point with no return. Once somebody dies, there's nothing you can do about it. it but then to me personally, I don't disrespect the dead. I don't speak on them. So I can never say I agree with that part. So it, when you get on songs and start, you know what I'm saying, talking about people that are not here no more, I think spirits are real, you know what I'm saying? And I, I don't think you should be encouraging that type of negative stuff. Now, Mo3 was a man of God, but as, you know what I'm saying, at some point, you know what I'm saying, he even said, you know what I'm saying, the the devil, you know, it was getting to him at some point, man. He was struggling. Mo3 was struggling when he died, man. He was like at a crossroads with, with, with his career, with his life. He was still in the streets, but wanted to get the fuck out. But it was still shit that he was holding on to, like Roy Lee dying. Like, you know what I'm saying? The, the war that happened and, you know what I'm saying, Mo3, Bubba. And Mo3 was here alone, bro. You know what I'm saying? Rainwater was the only person next to him, but Rainwater was never his friend. Sean G wasn't his friend. None of these people was friends with Mo3. They was all using him. Let's keep that a buck, man. All these people used Mo3. Let's go. Then in 2019... Mo3's homie Bubba was killed outside a grocery store in Dallas after two shooters rolled up on him and started letting off shots. It's not clear who was behind the hit, but from that point on, the violence never stopped. Freddie and Yella Beezy both allegedly ran down on Mo3's manager, Brian Rainwater, and put hands on him. Rainwater's just a music dude who doesn't have any street ties, but Freddie allegedly caught him one time, then Yella and his crew allegedly stomped him out in the middle of the street. Freddie and Mo3 were going back and forth all over social media. And then Freddie leaked a video that allegedly showed Mo3 running away from him. It's tough to see what actually happens in the video. 
But Mo3 said Freddie was capping about what went down. According to Mo3, he pulled up to Freddie's shop in his own hood to run the one-on-one -on -one fade, but Freddie wouldn't come out. He said everyone scattered when the cops pulled up. Then he hopped on IG Live and told Freddie to pop out and meet him to fight. Again, jumping online, you know what I'm saying? Whoop de whoop de whoop. You got to, if you in Dallas, you already know. Try boy Freddie and them boys gonna knock off something. I'm just if you from Dallas, you know them them old Cliff boys, Try boy Freddie and them. You ain't you ain't really. Most people, let's just say the the average person in Dallas is not jumping on the internet going at Trap Boy Freddy. I'm not saying whoop, I'm just I'm keeping it a buck. You ain't really ever seen it. You ain't you ain't really ever seen. It. There wasn't one dude that was cloud chasing. You ain't heard from that dude since. And I ain't talking about Mo3. I'm talking about some dude that was going around Dallas looking for Trap Boy Freddy. We ain't never heard from that dude again. But anyway, I'm just saying, man, if you're around Dallas, you know, man, Trap Boy Freddy and them boys, you ain't, you ain't just jumping on the internet playing with them unless you're ready to go to war because them boys going to knock off something. It ain't There ain't too many fades I didn't seen them run. I ain't saying they hoes and then I'm just saying, look, bro, I, I didn't heard a lot of shit about some pistol play. I ain't heard too much about boxing. So I didn't really think Trap Boy Freddy ever wanted to fight Mo3. I thought that, you know what I'm saying, if it came down to it, somebody was going to end up getting smoked. And I never thought this shit was going to end in the one on one fade. For Roy Lee, it didn't end like that. Yellow Beezy wasn't trying to box. They're trying to put you in one. These dudes in Dallas not trying to box. They're not trying to get on the internet and, and get made out of, of a meme and shit like that. They're not trying to do that shit. Nobody trying to do that shit. Let's keep that shit above. Another video came out that shows Mo pulling up to Freddy's place before that, too. Mo said he walked up with no gun on him and just wanted to throw hands with Freddy. Then Freddie pulls out a huge rifle, but Mo still walks away with no issues. What's wild about the whole situation is that Mo3 could have dipped out at any time and left the Dallas drama behind. He was running up huge numbers and collabing with dudes like Boosie Badass and could have moved away to focus on his career. But instead, he stuck around and allegedly got into a shootout with Freddie and his crew. In September 2020, Mo3 pulled up to a nightclub called V Live and shots started going off before he even got inside. He allegedly shot back and hit two ops. And according to rumors, Trap Boy Freddy was one of them. A couple of weeks later, Freddy told his fans that he broke his leg in a car wreck. But Mo3 aired him out on IG and said that he actually got shot at V-Live. And the reason why Mo3 knew about uh, him getting shot, there's only one reason. I think everybody in here knows. How, let me just ask you, how did Mo3 know? How, how did Mo3 know out of everybody in the world? Everybody thought Trap Boy Freddy got into a car accident. No one knew what happened. Mo3 was the one who broke that news. Mo3 jumped up and said, man, what is you talking about, fam? You got, you got hit up every life. Man, what? How did Mo3 know that information? Let's go. My pop laid up in the hospital talking about he got in the car wreck. Boy, they talking about you broke your leg. Tell these niggas you really got hit up. Then Freddy clapped back and dissed Mo for putting street business on the internet. At that point, it was only a matter of time before one of them either got killed or locked up. And just two months later, the war in Dallas ended with a brutal shooting in the middle of the highway. In November 2020, Mo3 allegedly spotted someone following him, so he got on the I-35 to get away. The move didn't work, though, and the other whips stayed right on him. And instead of keeping the chase up, Mo3 decided to shoot it out. He pulled over and ran to the passenger side of the car to grab his blower. But he wasn't fast enough, and the shooter ran up on him before he could get it. Mo3 ran off on foot down the highway, but the shooter popped him eight times, and he collapsed right there. People immediately started linking Freddie and Yellow Beezy to the murder. But it actually turns out they might not have been involved. Brian Rainwater says Mo3 was killed by a jealous dude because Mo was sleeping with his baby mama. Mo3 never died over no rap shit. Um, he died over a jealous baby daddy. And then we go, well, he should, this dude said Brian, it's Brandon. But it's, well, then we got Rainwater. Now we got old Rainwater in the building. Rainwater says, nah, he died of a jealous baby daddy. He, he died of a jealous baby daddy. That's all it was, a jealous baby daddy. It wasn't over no rap shit. Well, it's, it's funny because those that same jealous baby daddy and that same goofy ass dude he allegedly had with him, who was Kiwan White and the other dude, the baby daddy being Devin Brown. Allegedly, those same dudes are, are connected to GRC, which is Yellow Beezy crew. Now, allegedly, Kiwan, they saying is the leader of GRC, which we all know that's cat, because they did a Rico in GRC and everybody got locked up except for Yellow Beezy, who was the same person who kept getting picked up over and over, and they and they picked Yellow Beezy up with the same bottles that I showed y'all was in that house that was connected to every single person who got picked up in that Rico. So what does that tell you? I'm going to say that again. 
the same house that I showed y'all, there was the house with the lien. I showed y'all this. It's on members only right now, still to this day. I gave y'all this house and I connected Jose Bodega, uh, JJ, uh, Goyeo, motherfucking Trap Boy Freddy, everybody that's, the, and then everybody else that's in that damn uh, Rico. I connected all them people to that same exact house selling lean. Yellow BZ got picked up with that same lean, and he said, "Oh no, 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 no!" Nah, I told them it was something else, man. They let me go, man. Them cops tripping. No, nah, they they asked you where'd you get this shipment from? From you gave the drop, just like you were let you and your baby mama allegedly gave the drop on Mo Three in the first place. It was you and your baby mama. Yellow BZ and his baby mama put the drop in on Kiwan, allegedly. It's starting to get clearer and clearer because you gave the drop on your whole crew as soon as they locked your ass up, allegedly. Nobody knows the full story right now. Freddie might not have put the bag on his head, but that ain't stopping him from dissing Mo3 right after his death. Oh, and who else is connected to GRC? Mo3 baby mama. She was smashing Jose Bodega. Ashley. Ashley was smashing one of the leaders of GRC, the same dude that was in this in the video shoot with Kiwan White and Yellow Beezy. How is Mo3 Baby Mama sleeping with a dude that did a video with Kiwan White and Yellow Beezy, the same people who plotted to get Mo3 up out of here? And Yellow Beezy's best friend is who? Errol Spence. <laughs> Didn't they go to Mexico together as soon as Mo3 died? Didn't Mo3 ruin uh, Errol Spence's uh, boxing career? Errol Spence ain't never... Man, man, Terrence Crawford beat the beat the brakes off his ass. He beat the socks off his ass. I'm talking, he beat that dude like he like he damn made it, like he created that man. I'm talking about he beat him like he... Boy, I'm talking about I ain't never seen nobody get whooped like that. That was one of the worst ass whoopings I didn't ever seen. Mo3 did that. And that's not a legend. Mo three hunted him down. Everybody know Yellow Beezy put the bag. Yellow Beezy and Earl Spence put that bag on Mo three because Bubba and Mo three, what they did to Yellow Beezy, then taunted him about it. They got Bubba back for that shit. You know, man, it is what it is. They they got Bubba back for that shit. Then they came from Mo three. Everybody in Dallas know this shit, man. Everybody know Mo3 was behind uh, Errol Spence. We all know that shit by now. It took for Charleston White to steal all my information and get it out to the world. But, hey, at least it got out there. Let's continue. He dropped the track Laugh Now and said, tell him Laugh Now. Heard they jump out the whip. He got ran down. Why you ain't tell him before the beat? You was fanned out. Everybody was instigating. Look how it panned out. Heard when they caught him, they caught him with his pants down. Freddie might have survived the war with Mo3, but now he's facing decades in prison on a weapons charge he picked up last year. The cops also found a live tiger inside his house, which is illegal in Texas, but it's not clear if Freddie will face charges for that yet. Freddie and Mo3 could have put on for the city together and started a new wave of Southern rap, but instead they let street beef tear Dallas apart and now Mo3's dead and Freddie might be facing decades if he goes down for this new case. Rest in peace to Mo3 and everyone else who lost their lives. Man, 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 man. Long live Mo3, y'all. Long live Mo3. We not done. We are not done. We just getting started tonight, y'all. We are just getting started. All right, let's continue. Let's continue. Trap Boy Freddy and Mo3. Yellow Beezy, all the connections, man. We not done with you, Trap. Let's talk to you, Trap. Nah, I sit high and look low. Yeah, that's what that's how that shit happened to that nigga. I always talking about dead people. Now look. I ain't doing no mocking or nothing, bro. I'm only doing unto others as done to me, motherfucker. God taught me that, nigga. Do unto others you want done to you, nigga. I don't talk about dead folks, bro. I can care less about that nigga being dead. He been dead in my fucking house, nigga. See, that's what y'all don't realize. Coon ass fools. That nigga wasn't fucking coming outside. So I be hearing, I be reading them coming. Folks talking about, you happy that nigga dead? You can breathe. That man was making videos in the motherfucking kitchen, nigga. Downtown Dallas, nigga. Nigga knew all the high spots. Yeah, like you say in your song, we know all your high spots. Nigga knew all that shit. 1400, nigga. Nigga know what's going on, bitch ass nigga. 
all in the kitchen, every video, singing and mocking my partner. <laughs> See, he says Mo Three was, you know, antagonizing his his crew by mocking the dead. And I mean, I don't know, man. Y'all, y'all tell me in the chat how y'all feel about Trap Boy Freddie saying, "Yeah, I'm only doing this because he did it to me." He was the one in the kitchen making the videos talking about my partners. Whoop de whoop de whoop de whoop de whoop. No, I'm talking about. No, I'm talking about. All right, let's continue. Hold on, we're not done, thugs. We are not. Done. Make sure y'all smash them likes. Make sure y'all smash them likes. Let's go. Another episode from Talks at the Loft. Man, look, bro, I'm on Santa. Where you be at? What you said? <laughs> I'm on Zayna in my daddy's shop. I'm where you be, nigga. You know why I'm at. I'm right up here, nigga. You say you know all the hiding spots in the song. If we was hiding, you know where the spots at, right? What you ain't know? Hey, nigga, say. You want to fight for 10 or 20,000. <laughs> nigga, I'm looking at your shop right now. Nigga, I ain't playing with you, little punk. I'm a punk <laughs> I'm on Zayna in my daddy's shop. I'm where you be, nigga. You know why I'm at. I'm right up here, nigga. You say you know all our hiding spots in the song. If we was hiding, you know where the spots at, right? What you ain't know? Hey, nigga, say. You want to fight for 10 or 20,000. <laughs> nigga, I'm looking at your shop right now. Nigga, I ain't playing with you, little punk. I know punk ass shit you talking about, nigga. We ride right, with a couple streets over. If you be at the shop, I don't ever see that nigga though. I wonder why. I remember the last time y'all supposed to have been seeing me up there, bro. Ooh. Hey, what's up, baby? So, <clears throat> whenever the last one of the last times he he did end up seeing Mo three. I asked Rainwater what happened this night because Trap Boy Freddy and me had a conversation. It was on my live. Trap Boy Freddy calls into my live and Trap Boy Freddy says, Why don't you ask Rainwater what happened that night? Wooty wooty woo. They was this many deep and we was just too deep. We was one car. They had whatever. I forgot what the fuck he said. But anyway, I asked Rainwater about this and Rainwater said, Trap Boy Freddy tried to kill us. That's exactly what he said. I'm like, bro. So I mean, I. Everybody been snitching in this Mo3 shit. Everybody in Dallas has been snitching. Everybody, every one of these hardcore street dudes that got picked up on these charges and came home and they homeboys got picked up. It's not a coincidence. Hey, no coincidence, right? It ain't no such thing as a coincidence. When, when, when I showed y'all at the very beginning of the Mo3 case that there was a man named Jerry Johnson, the dude had two prior possession of a firearm by a convicted felon listen to me listen to this y'all there's a dude and this is yellow Beezy's cousin i gave y'all this information the first month of the mo3 case i gave y'all this information very very early there was a man named jerry johnson this is yellow Beezy's cousin do your research yellow Beezy, your cousin's a snitch yellow Beezy's cousin jerry johnson had two prior possession of a firearm by a convicted felon and got caught with what i think two more guns in the midst of him getting caught up the judge says drop the case throw it out we we're on, we we want we just going we're going to let him go and they said they they had no explanation of why they dropped the case i i showed the paperwork very early this is when I didn't know shit about YouTube. I was I didn't even know what the fuck I was doing. But anyway, I was on here and I showed y'all the paperwork. It was a long ass time ago. It was very, very early. But go back and remember, I gave y'all the name Jerry Johnson. You go back and look today on that GRC paperwork that I dropped about a month or two ago, whenever I dropped that shit. Who was the leader on that paperwork in the GRC paperwork? It was Jerry Johnson, the snitch. He gave up everybody for a lesser sentence. And I proved this shit. All these dudes been ratting. All these dudes been snitching. Everybody in the Mo3 case took a deal. All these people who helped plot Mo3, the feds came looking for him. They didn't want to get him for the Mo3 murder. 
they gonna let Kiwan and Devin fight. They fight for their life for that shit. But even they got caught with the Fed charges. They just went down in the Rico around the Mo3 case. That's all that was. Everybody gonna get picked up. Trap Boy Freddy got a Fed charge. Yellow Beezy gonna end up getting one. GRC went down. Uh, CME went down. All of these dudes got Fed cases. Everybody snitched on everybody in Dallas. Let's keep that shit a buck. We not done though, man. All these dudes been snitching, man. I don't give a damn what nobody tell y'all. Every every last one of these dudes been snitching out here in Dallas, man. How you think Sean G got that slap on the wrist in in the feds? Sean G got that slap on the wrist in the damn feds, man. Let's continue, man. Let's continue chopping it up about Mo3, man. We're going to get to this queen shit. Don't worry. We're going to get to it. Let's go. Mo3 was one of the hottest rappers in Dallas and on his way to the mainstream. But in 2020, he was tragically shot down in broad daylight. His death made headlines everywhere. Most people have no idea about the deadly beef that led up to it. So today, we're breaking down the wild story of Mo3 and the war that split Dallas in two. Let's get right into it. Mo3 had a crazy come up in North Dallas. His mom and dad split when he was a kid. And Mo3 was surrounded by poverty and violence. On the track all the way down, he said, You didn't write my song, so leave me alone. I held it down on my own. And in an interview, he explained that the line came from growing up with nothing. When his mom's electricity would get shut off, Mo3 would sleep outside in the Texas heat, and they had to use candles for light. Mo3 didn't have a lot of options as a kid in that environment, so he hopped off the porch and got involved with the streets at a young age. Mo3 said he stole his cousin's gun when he was 12 and started walking around with it. He didn't have a magazine for it, though, and later got caught and had it taken away. He caught his first robbery charge at 14, spent the next few years going through every correctional facility Dallas ever built, according to him. Mo3 was only 15 when he started getting into the shootout. In an interview, he couldn't even remember how many times he had been shot at. But all the violence never made him leave the streets or switch up how he moved. It was clear that Mo3 was headed to jail or the grave, even though he was just a teenager. And he ended up getting locked up at 17 and had to settle down for a while. He caught four aggravated robbery charges and was facing some serious time. Mo3's mom tried to help him beat the case, and she ended up losing everything because of it. Her house and car were both taken, and she ended up having to live with her sister while all the legal fees racked up. Mo and go back and think about it. Fast forward today. Look how they did Mo3 Mama. Mo3 Mama sacrificed everything for her son. For him to get out of jail and beat those four indictments that he had, she gave up her house, lost everything. If I'm not mistaken, the lady was homeless. Mo3 owed a lot to her for his career. And they turned around and threw the mama off the damn uh, estate. Threw the woman off there just so they can continue to run plays around Dallas. His baby mamas is money-hungry whores, allegedly. Mo3 didn't fuck with these ladies. Mo3 was handed down a 10-year sentence. Before he was shipped off to prison, his dad visited him in the county jail and changed everything. Mo3's dad asked him what he was going to do after he got out, and Mo3 didn't really have an answer. School didn't work out for him, he didn't have any job skills, and the only option he saw was going back to the streets. But instead of jumping right back into the mix, Mo3's dad told him he should become a rapper. He said instead of getting back in the streets, Mo3 should just rap about the things he had already done. Mo3 never even thought about making a career out of music. But he had been rapping and singing his whole life. His mom had him singing in the church choir, and he would rap for his dad's friends whenever he went there. Back then, Dallas didn't have a big rap scene, though. So Mo3 never even tried to take it seriously. But that all changed, and he got out of prison. Mo3 only served two years and got released for good behavior. He came out with no money in his pockets, but he caught a lucky break because his cousin owned a recording studio. Mo3's cousin was locked up at the time, but he put Mo3 in contact with the dudes who were running the spot and let him use the booth for free. The first track he dropped was a remix of Mr. Lucci's track, Half Step. Mr. Lucci's legend in the Dallas rap scene, and a producer working in the studio with Mo3 didn't even want to be involved at first. He thought remixing the track would f up a Dallas classic. He was like, man, hell nah, bro. Like, I don't want to be a part of this shit. Like, fam, you finna f up a Dallas classic. And to be real, at this point, that's when a lot of the Dallas OGs turned on Mo3. Now, this was a time where everybody could have pulled Mo3 in and embraced him as the next hot thing in Dallas. But this was the point where all the OGs kind of turned their back on Mo3. So when he came back, whenever he got rich, Mo3 was like, man, fuck all them dudes. He wasn't, and then all of them want to do business with him. Everybody want to come along then for the ride. But Mo3 was like, man, fuck all y'all dudes, broke ass dudes. And then he started dissing all the OGs on real life street stars and whoopie whoopie. That's when all that shit happened. Let's continue. But after Mo3 hopped in the booth and laid it down, everyone knew it was a hit. Mo3 dropped his first project in 2014 and was already building a buzz in the city. 
He kept grinding and releasing music, and after a couple of years in the game, he signed a deal with Epic Records. It should have been a huge win, but then everything fell apart after Mo3 was involved in the shooting in 2017. It's not clear exactly how it all went down, but rumors say Mo3 was in the same club as Goyeyo when it happened. They allegedly had issues before, but that night the situation popped off, two people got shot. Luckily, Mo3 made it out alive, but he was booked for the shooting and was facing 13 years in prison. The charges were eventually dropped, but the situation made Epic get cold feet and Mo3 was on his own again in the industry. Around the same time, Yellow Beezy was popping off in the Dallas rap scene too. He had been releasing music since he was 14, but in 2017, he blew up with the track That's On Me and charted on the Billboard Hot 100. Yellow Beezy and Mo3 didn't have issues back in the day. Yella even ranked Mo3 as one of the top five rappers in the city. They have mutual homies too, like Trap Boy Freddy, who Mo3 linked up with on the track Landlord. Everything was cool at first, but then Yella started beefing with Mo3's homie, Roy Lee. Lee was a comedian from Dallas who started roasting Yella on social media after Yella's crew allegedly jumped him at a nightclub. And a lot of this shit stems from Rainwater as well. That's what a lot of people don't know as well. Rainwater ended up getting Roy Lee and Mo3 knocked off. <clears throat> Rainwater was the one antagonizing that crew. This was about Rainwater sleeping with uh, Yellow Beezy's baby mama, allegedly. This is about Rainwater sleeping with Yellow Beezy's baby mama, allegedly. Allegedly. Rainwater uh, slept with her, and that's, that's the reason why all this shit kicked off. That's why all the crew started beefing, because Yellow Beezy was heated about that shit. They were sharing all the same chicks, but this is alleged though. Let's continue. It's not clear who started the issue, but Lee was on Yella's head. There was rumors that Mo3 and Yella had beef too, but Mo3 allegedly reached out to him and they squashed it. But at the same time, Mo3's homie Roy Lee was keeping the pressure on Yella. And then everything got messier when Trap Boy Freddy put out the track Pick 6 with Yella and Go Yeo, but didn't get a verse from his homie Mo3. Mo3 said he didn't care about the track. That's where the real beef between him, Yella, and Freddy allegedly started. But before they started sending shots at each other, Roy Lee was already airing out Yella on social media. Lee called out Yella over and over trying to run a fade, and Yella wouldn't even respond to him. Lee kept it up though, and in 2018, he ended up getting shot in the leg. It's not clear who was behind the shooting, but at first, it seemed like Lee was going to be fine. He posted videos from the hospital and let everyone know he was okay. But when it comes to gunshots, you never know how the situation will turn out though. And two weeks later, Lee tragically passed away from blood clots in his lungs. He had just performed a show the night before he died. So everyone was shocked when the news broke about his death. Nobody was ever arrested for Lee's death. But rumors were flying that Yellow Beezy was involved. And just a few days after Lee died, Yellow was caught in drive-by and got hit three times. Do y'all feel like Yellow Beezy was behind the Roy Lee hit? Who in here, raise your hand if you feel like that was Yellow Beezy's work. Let me know in the building, do y'all feel like Yellow Beezy was behind the, uh, the, uh, the Roy Lee hit? A couple months after Yellow was shot, Mo3 dropped the track Word Around Town and allegedly sent a diss with the line, Word Around Town, and somebody got found. Slumped over in the car, body stretched out on the ground. While his beef in the city was heating up, Mo3's career was taking off at the same time. He leans up a boozy badass a couple of years earlier, and in January 2019, they dropped a remix of Mo3's track, Everybody. The song was already hot. The remix blew up and racked up over 100 million views on YouTube. Then a month later, Mo3 dropped a track 219, took his beef with Yella and Trap Boy Freddy to the next level. On the track, he said, In the city they talking, they know what I did. I hit up that rapper, you made him famous. Yeah, he barely made it, but went out again. He also talks about the 2017 shooting, took another shot at Yella on the line. Laws asking about a body in Fort Worth. Had my show, but I do not recall it. You heard that rapper got shot on the tollway? No, I don't. Who? What you gonna call it? And he was like antagonizing everybody with this beef. How do y'all feel about this, man? Your Mo3 was going, he was getting active in the streets, allegedly. Or was he just rap? See, that's what his crew make it look like Mo3 was just lying about all this shit and he was a pussy ass rapper. That's how they make it sound. Like, oh, no, no, he was just lying about it. So was he lying in his raps or did he really do this shit? Y'all tell me. Was Mo3, did he have cap in his raps or was this really Mo3's work? Because Dallas, Texas says this ain't Mo3 work. This is just him being a rapper. Rainwater saying this is just Mo3 being a rapper. Sean G says this is just Mo3 being a rapper. Y'all tell me, does Mo3 have cap in his raps or was he really about that shit? Mo3 was always calling Yellow Whatchamacallit on social media, so fans immediately knew who the line was about. Yellow went live and said Mo3 was capping about everything. He told Mo3 he was going to put hands on him, then said that Trap Boy Freddy had footage of Mo3 running away from him. Freddie ended up releasing a blurry video that allegedly showed Mo3 ducking him. But Mo3 said, that's not how it went down. 
According to him, he pulled up trying to fight Freddy in his own hood, but the cops pulled up and everyone ran. By this point, everyone in the city knew about Mo 3's beef with Yella and Freddy, but it was about to get even bigger. It's still not clear exactly how it all happened, but a concert promoter ended up putting Mo 3 and Yella Beezy on the same show. Mo 3 allegedly told him it was all cool, and there wouldn't be any issue. But when he showed up to the venue, he ended up getting arrested while he was on IG Live. Yella hopped on social media, claimed Mo 3 wasn't even supposed to be there, and he was just clout chasing. But Mo 3 came back with proof he was on the lineup that night. The situation put them both in the spotlight. But not before long, everyone got a reminder that it was deeper than rap beat. You see, Mo 3 was supposed to be on that show. They just, the, the Yellow Beezy and them ran a play on him. And you see Yellow Beezy and them connected with the same people who be running them plays on YouTube. It's all the same game. that They've been doing this shit on YouTube. They do it in the streets. It's a cold world out here, man. But Dallas, Texas, boy, I tell you, it's loose. Mo 3's manager, Brian Rainwater, isn't a street dude. But that didn't stop him from getting caught up in the situation. One night outside of a Dallas club called V-Live, Yellow Beezy and his crew ran Rainwater down and stomped him out in the middle of the street. While the beef was getting people hurt for real, it also put Mo3's music in the spotlight. He dropped a collab tape with Boosie and was racking up millions of streams. It was clear that Mo3 had the skills to make it out of Dallas and leave the streets behind. But unfortunately, that's not how it went down. In September 2020, Mo3 allegedly got into a shootout at V-Live. He made it out and didn't get hit, but Trap Boy Freddy was allegedly shot. A couple weeks later, Freddie hopped on social media and said he broke his leg in a car crash. But Mo3 called him out and said he was just trying to cover up how he got hit at V-Lot. I laid up in the hospital talking about he got in the car wreck. Boy, they talking about you broke your leg. Tell him you really got hit up. Yeah. Boosie's always said that rappers should leave their hometown after they blow up. But Mo3 didn't take the advice. Two months after the shooting at V-Live, Mo3 was caught by a shooter on the interstate in Dallas and tragically passed away. It happened in broad daylight in the middle of traffic. Mo3 allegedly saw someone following them, so he hopped on the I-35 to duck him. The car kept up the chase, though, and Mo3 pulled over to try to grab his gun. He hopped out of the whip and ran to the passenger side, but the shooter was already on him, and Mo3 had to take off on foot. He started running down the road, but the shooter let off shots and hit him eight times. A dude named Keywon White was booked for the murder a month later, and the cops eventually arrested the second dude and Devin Brown. Everyone knew about Mo3's beef with Yellow, so rumors started flying that he was involved with the shooting. Plus, it turns out that Yella and White have been spotted together in pictures on social media. The murder might not be that simple, though. White claims he doesn't know Yella, and Mo3's manager says, Now, uh, Mo3 died from a jealous baby daddy. According to him. And the easiest thing for rappers, for lame rappers or rappers that just, you know, want to get a buzz real quick, if uh, if a dude rap, if a dude die across town, just make a diss record and act like you did it, and you'll get your streams will go up. He says Mo3 was just messing with a woman, and her ex got heated over it. The case over Mo3's death hasn't gone to trial yet, but Kiwan White just got hit with almost nine years for a gun charge. Some people think he can end up testifying in the Mo3 case to get some time taken off, but right now, nobody knows how it'll all play out. Mo3 was one of the most talented rappers in Dallas and had a lot of momentum behind his name, but unfortunately, he stayed in the city too long and it came back to haunt him. There's still a lot of unanswered questions about his murder and what really led to it, but we won't have any concrete answers until the trial starts. Rest in peace to Mo3. Long live Mo3. Long live Mo3. Drop them gorillas in the chat, y'all. So look, right about now, this is where I'm going to I'm gonna play this little live real quick. I'm going to chop it up with y'all about something. Let's get to, let me see where I want to start with this. We're going to start right here real quick. We're going to start right here. Uh, I want to do this. All right, let me share my screen. Let me share my screen. Let's talk. Greetings and gratitude. Fair use goes into effect. You already know. <clears throat> Ain't gonna be no motherfucking singing this morning until I seen these niggas in today, today little graves because. True. It's a long lot, so I'm gonna skim through this shit, but we're gonna we gonna get to the gems. When they came to my chat last night, this rising, whenever the fuck it was, I really gotta calm myself. I really do. I gotta calm myself right now, right now. So 
I I reached out to him. I, I, I went to the DM like they asked of me because that's who I am. And I um I said, this is Quatita Dean, and I understand that you wanted to speak to me. Here's my phone number. So I left him my phone number. So I said, well, let me see what the live was about. And I seen that it was like five hours and 39 minutes long. Make sure y'all smash the like button, man. Smash the like button. So as I start to watch it, I'm watching it. And I'm like, okay, well. As they're saying some stuff, I'm like, oh, what this got to do with me? So I watched probably about an hour of that. And then I skipped through to where they were talking about me. So I'm listening. And at this point, I see that there's now rainwater there. And um, I wanted to upload a couple things. So let me just, I've been asleep. I've been up all night, furious watching this, trying to figure it out. And because I, I was pondering, I was pondering like, I should just go up there on his line and spill all the beans. And then I went to use the toilet. And as I was sitting up on the toilet, I looked over at the shower and said, you know what? I'm going to get in the shower. And then I'll just go on my own platform and spill the beans. As you should. You should always do it on your own platform. Just spill all the beans on your own platform. Let's, let's talk. Now, one person said, I'm sorry for your loss. How is his children? Anybody in the chat? See, in Skull's chat, they kept saying she was Mo 3's mother. You think anybody in the chat said anything to his mother? No. You know why I know? Because I watched the chat for three hours. Now, one person said, I'm sorry for your loss. How is his children? How are you holding up? Not one person. They completely skipped over that. But they're Mo3 sector, aren't they? I think everybody knows there's no such thing as that. I mean, you got to actually cover Mo3 to be involved in some shit. You do know that at some point you got to actually talk about Mo3 and what the fuck is going on, right? I mean, you can't be a sector of people called something if you don't actually touch the actual subject of what the fuck is actually going on in this situation you can't just you can't do that let's continue that's interesting to me nobody said a motherfucking word to his mom the very person you on here arguing about not one Person. Mom got up there and said, Mo3 was very happy and pleased with the reading that he received from her. He was excited about it before and after. And I was sitting there during the whole reading. And she told my Ashley, Mo3's baby mama. And they still was like, oh, she's cat. Salute, reflective beauty on that 10 piece. I appreciate you for that 10 piece. Salute, salute, salute. But this is the motherfucker you claim that you loved him. You loved you motherfuckers love nothing. You don't have a placement. So you have created these sectors to belong to something. And the truth is, if he was alive, he wouldn't fuck with none of you niggas. I'm going to be real. Most of you wouldn't fuck with none of these people. It's a it's a whole lot of shit that go on on here. The Mo three would not have fucked with. I'm gonna be real, man. It's a lot of shit. But let's well, continue. My, my right. So don't worry about. It. We gonna get into all of it. Let's not act like these niggas ain't going to hiding. Let's not do that. But just in case you was confused. <laughs> Interesting. 
Why would anyone believe anything that rainwater has to say? Interesting. Was anybody in the chat? Because, see, he said nobody was killed. I counted them down. I said six will die. How many did you just read? Mm. Interesting. Interesting. There was a lot of people in the chat that said Quatita got paid off of Mo 3's death. Quatita got paid because Mo 3 died. Quatita was in a raggedy household, says Rainwater. And then after the fact, Orsco said that I'm not sure which one at this point. Um said that after that she was in the hotel room. First of all, I was already on tour. Let's just keep this a buck, man. This is where it starts to get a, a, a real weird because these people have been at war for quite some time right now, man. These people have been at war for quite some time. Let's continue. You said several times, may I add, Switchblade? You said Quatita's gift got snatched when she went to Atlanta. I keep trying to tell y'all. You have proof of that? And I'm telling y'all, something allegedly they saying something happened in Atlanta with that same witch lady that was with the Migos. The same, I don't know. I don't want to get into all that. I'm just saying that's what they that's what they say. And then when you present your proof, can you can you show me exactly who you are? Because if I'm not mistaken, I just talked to Kim Porter this November, and I prophesied like like you church folks like to say, prophesied. Kimor Lee's fire in her fucking house. So what gift do you have? Because, see, I know where my gifts stand at. Matt, for your response. There you go. Ma'am, with Jackie and September 21st. So I initially did a reading with Mo3. I believe it was September 21st. He was murdered November 11th. Okay. So in that reading, I'm gonna ho hopefully I make a whole bunch of shit make sense to you. Cause see, I've already talked about this and I shouldn't have to talk about it again, but I will, but I will. So in this reading, I'm calling him because he now says he's ready. He says he has $500. Initially I was booked out months ahead months and months ahead and he was trying to get me because one i had did a reading for jackie and her children's father or boyfriend whoever the fuck he was on facetime initially she was a client i didn't know jackie i did a reading for her and her dude they sat in her kitchen her children played in her house we were on facetime when we did it Make sure y'all get the like sub. Get the like sub, man. See, we circle back. It's kind of crazy. We circle back all this time, and it comes back to Queen and Ratchet TV. I'm just saying, once you circle back, you start to see it comes back to Queen and Ratchet TV once again. Because all of the gems were right there in the beginning. Now, what ended up happening with her? I don't know. I don't know where it went left. It did go left at some point. <clears throat> I'm not here to say it didn't. Because, you know, I'm never going to not keep it a buck. I'm always going to keep it a buck. It did go left at some point with her. And I heard it was after the Atlanta thing. And it looks like it, it kind of leads up to something. Something happened in Atlanta. I don't know what. Something went down. But it ain't been the same ever since. But let's continue. So then, because I was booked out. Booked out out why because i had already went viral twice mo3 did not make quatita Dean. mo3 found quatita because quatita was already a name that was already known in hollywood my business my company called wolf pussy this is one of the most beautiful pussies you ever see in your life okay look I don't, let's just skip past. We we don't want to we don't want to talk about you. You 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 cat. 
we don't want to talk about your cat queen but we we definitely want the gems in the mo3 case but we don't want to talk about your cat um like i said when i did mo3's reading again i didn't even know who the fuck he was at all two weeks prior to him even booking with me not on my site but with me because i had a website that was doing great okay somebody said i saw her with other psychics at one point because bitch i run a fucking business something you broke bitches know nothing about i'm gonna be real some dudes in here saying they want to see it <laughs> Hey, look, man. To each, to each them. Hey, if y'all want to see it, go jump in her DM, man. I'm pretty sure she might. Hey, she might. She might bust it open for you. Never know. Queen might just send you that that cat pic. You never know. Hey, enter at your own risk. It, it might get loose in there. Hey, she said it's it's, it's tight and, and whatever. I don't know, man. Look, y'all go figure it out. I'm good. Thank you. I am the first black woman ever to run her own all black psychic hotline bitch i paved ways i think miss cleo did this shit first god me now i'm be i think miss cleo might have did it first but go ahead we're gonna continue some sort of fight that happened between mo three's people and yellow beezy and yellow beezy came out saying oh something about i beat that nigga up or i beat his ass by myself or whatnot and come to find out it was a jumping or something. So this is the story that I'm getting told from my sister who happens to like his music. I said, oh, damn, that's crazy as fuck. I like the dude's song. I didn't even know he was into it with nobody. I'm speaking about Yellow Beezy at this time. So then I get a text message, which I have posted many, many, many times over from Mo3. All of the text messages I have posted over and over again. I have nothing to fucking prove. So he says, I'm trying to book with you. And I say, I'm booked out. He said, that's too far. I got 500 for you. I said, oh, okay, yeah. Well, all right, well. He said, I'm booked with somebody else from your site, Ortego or something. I said, okay, well, you know, that's cool. He said, no, I really want you though. Okay. I got 500. I said, no problem. Send it then. Because I did not believe he had 500. Why? Because I thought it was a woman I was talking to. I had no idea. He never introduced himself or who the fuck he was. Don't worry about it. We got time today, bitch. Puts and everything. Get them situated. This is driving. I said, all right. So I give my speech. I said, what is your name? He said, do you want my name or what, they, what I go by? I said, you can give me both. He said, my name is Melvin but they call me Mo. I heard Mo. So I'm right. I said, oh, okay, Mo. Carlos is now doing like this. And I'm like, what the fuck? He said, bitch, you know who that is? I said, what are you talking about? No. He said, bitch, that's a rapper. I said, really? Mo3 can hear it. He's chuckling on the phone. He said, Mo3. I said, oh, Mo3. Okay. I said, you a rapper? He said, chuckled again and said, yeah i said oh that's cool and i now do y'all feel like she capping or is she dropping gems let me know drop the caps or drop the gems i want to know from y'all right now from where we stand is queen dropping gems or is she is she already lying y'all let me know in the chat let's go proceeding to do the motherfucking reading so i'm not going to go into the whole reading because why it was like an hour long However, I'm going to hit a few key points that was brought up on another motherfucker's platform. The chick come to the motherfucking door and he paused in a mannequin. Like he talking to a chick on him came through as well. Now, I didn't even know that he was like some sort of comedian. I had already previously seen one of his videos where he's in the bathroom like he talking to a chick on the phone. The girl come, Roy Lee, gratitude. The chick come to the motherfucking door and he paused in a mannequin. She like, what the fuck you doing? He said, I'm trying to do something. I'm not knowing that's his friend Roy Lee because I didn't even know that nigga had got killed. 
So these two people come through. There's a few things that I never talk about when I talk about his session. One is he did ask me because he said Bubba takes his pictures and does his photography again. This is what is being said right here. When she says, now I was right there. He was, when he was talking to her, she's not making it up. He wasn't talking about a photographer. She was uh, talking about Bubba. That's what kills me about you niggas. The same very niggas that set him up and killed him along with these bitches. Y'all praise and worship, and now you 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 money, you down money, you on you on these the same niggas that set this man up. Y'all ain't nobody's motherfucking friend. Shut the fuck up. I mean, everybody know everybody that's claiming they Mo 3's friend on YouTube was Mo 3's op, right? I think I think that should be clear to everybody in this room. None of these people was actually Mo 3's friend. Everybody was just looking for a come up and an opportunity off Mo 3. Let's continue. So now he asked me if a nigga named DJ, I'm sure none of you niggas don't know who it is because you're not in this circle for real. Oh, you know Ratchet knows who the, who DJ is. Tell me who DJ is in the chat, y'all. Who is DJ connect, connected to before we continue? Who is DJ connected to? Can y'all tell me in the chat? Who is DJ connected to, y'all? Let me. I'll wait for y'all. I'm going to wait. We're going to get this shit right tonight, man. We got to chop it up, gang. We got to chop it up. Somebody said, Yella, you wrong. It ain't Yella. Somebody says Spence. You are there. You go, Sapphire. Why Sapphire? I gotta always tell y'all. He is in C. He is seeing me. He can seeing me, DJ. Y'all, that's the chick that Mataya used to smash. Remember? I mean, that's the chick Mataya used to smash. That dude. That chick. That's that chick Mataya used to smash. That dude. Mataya is the girl who had DJ tatted on her, and she had Mo Three tatted on her, but she covered it up because seeing me knocked Mo Three off. Y'all, man, come on, y'all, y'all, but. Man, man, man. He connected to Trap Boy Freddy. He's in CME, y'all. He is in CME. We talking about DJ now. Mo3 asked this about DJ in the reading. Had anything to do with his homeboy's murder? But a nigga named DJ, I'm sure none of you niggas don't know who it is because you're not in a circle for real. Had anything to do with his homeboy's murder? But so Mo3 asked her, did DJ have anything to do with Bubba's murder? Why would Mo3 be asking, did DJ get Bubba knocked off? Or did DJ have anything to do with it? And you remember DJ? I mean, DJ got into some shit. We're going to continue, though. Let's go. And we talked about that. He asked me about a few niggas. He asked me about number seven. Mo3, why would Mo3 ask her about number seven? You know why? Because Rainwater introduced number seven. Rainwater is the one who brought his op into the operation. He brought his op into the operation. He was like, man, who is this dude? I don't what, talk to me about this number seven dude because I don't fuck with him. He asked me about a few things. So now. There was a point that was made because they're playing this video of me talking to Jossie, Jackie, and Sweet Pea, right? Now, I'm thinking that the girlfriend is her. I'm not knowing he's talking about Shaquilla because he never called her by her name. So then they brought Ashley up and Ashley said, no, um, that wasn't said. Pop. Okay, okay, hold on. So right there. I want to show y'all something. Before we continue, I want to show y'all something before I forget this. I, I completely forgot to show y'all this shit. Hold on, hold on. Give me a second. Let me show y'all this shit real quick because uh yeah, I got some I got some juice over here. Hold on. I got something for y'all. It, it's about to get loose. Let me show y'all something earlier. Let me show y'all something from earlier. Hold on. Here we go, gang. All right. Let's show y'all this. Let me go to my DM real quick. All right. Let's get to it. My bad. Check this out, y'all. Check this out right here. Listen to this. Come outside, hoe ass listen, nigga. Listen, listen. You, Fuck you, you, the same you, you the same person that said somebody ass told you nigga. Sweet Pea was in a meeting about killing three. Come on. Sweet Pea did not kill three. You said that, bitch. You said no, you, she had I, I got the recording. Jackie. So speaking of Sweet Pea, here goes Jackie. No ADA. Saying this, sweet. Well, listen to this again. Go 
come outside, ho ass listen, nigga. Listen, listen. Fuck you, you, the you bitch. Person, you, you the same person that said Fish somebody told you Sweet Pea, Sweet Pea was in a meeting about killing three. Come on. Sweet Pea did not kill three. You said that, bitch. You said no, you, she had I, I got the recording. Jackie! Jackie! Come outside, ho ass listen, nigga. Listen, listen. Fuck you, bitch. You the same person that said somebody told you Sweet Pea. Sweet Pea was in a meeting about killing three. Come on. Sweet Pea did not kill her. You said that, bitch. You said no, you, she had I, I got the recording. Jackie! Y'all bringing up my... Y'all bringing up my... He lied, Jackie! Mm -hmm. You think I ain't finna lace my cousin up, bitch? I got the recording. Yeah, she man, 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 man. She already she had them recorded like two or three weeks ago. Yes, uh, bitch! Man. Yeah! Man. Yeah, yeah ho! Yeah, I knew you I, was a I snake. The I, I knew lie. your ass was a snake. Bitch, you Ooh, three weeks ago. Yes, bitch. Yeah. Yeah, ho. Yeah, I knew you was a snake. I knew your ass was a snake. Bitch, you'll never snake me, ho ass I nigga. Man, 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 man. What Rain then got himself into this time, y'all? It goes Jackie right here. They speaking to Sweet Pea right now. I've been telling her. I knew your yeah, bitch ass. Oh, you well, you're not, uh, you see what he do, Jackie? Uh, he trying to get on the, the panel and he trying to lie and say it's you when it's really him. Bitch, I'm not dumb, ho. Mm -hmm. I make you think I'm slow, ho. Yeah, she let me hear Ain't the Ain't that slow, like I mean, bitch. Jackie, they been heard that so record slow. three, four weeks ago, Look nigga. Up, Come outside, ho-ass nigga. Listen, listen. Fuck you, bitch. You the same person that said somebody talking to Sweet Pea was in a meeting about killing three. Come on. Sweet Pea did not kill three. You said that, bitch. You said no, you, she had I, I got the recording. <sighs> so now they saying Sweet Pea. And remember, Jackie, no, that's why Jackie got real quiet. And then in the end, Jackie, like, y'all be careful what y'all saying on here. Be careful what y'all Yeah, I bet you want them to be real damn careful, don't you, Jackie? I bet you want everybody to be real careful, don't you, Jackie? We're not done, man. Let's get back to this shit, man. We're not done. We're not done. Let's go. Friend, it's her. I'm not know of me talking to Jossie, Jackie, and Sweet Pea, right? Now, I'm thinking that the girlfriend is her. I'm not knowing he's talking about Shaquilla because he never called her by her name. So then they brought Ashley up and Ashley said, no, um, that wasn't said. Pause. I didn't even know Ashley was sitting there until this point in the reading, talking to Mo3. And this is how I found out Ashley was even sitting there because I noticed he started talking in codes. I said, hold on. I'm doing the reading. I say, hold on. See, I don't talk about this part, but I'm going to tell it to you. I said, hold on. Wait a fucking minute. I said, you messing with two, you messing with two women. Now he starts talking in code. He said, uh, something like that. I said, oh. Well, because you got to know Ashley is in the background while Mo3 is doing this reading. So Queen's information just kind of, it just looks it looks like she ain't lying right now, man, in the beginning. I'm saying, look, I don't know what ended up happening eventually, but I'm just talking about the beginning where the credibility was still intact from a lot of people. And she was in the head of this pack with credibility in the beginning because she had them girls and they gave the drop on that live you even hear rainwater on that live calling and say your partner dead it's time to pop bottles rainwater celebrated when mo3 died you ain't never seen nobody in this room has ever seen rainwater shed a tear in behind mo3 nobody in this room could say dog bro i ain't gonna lie bro rainwater broke down bro i seen i seen him break down rainwater ain't give a damn about mo3 dying he knew he was gonna die rainwater don't give one fuck that, that mo3 not here no more he say I'm trying to work it out with my baby mama, though. We trying to see what we going to do. You know why he said that? Because his baby mama was right there in front of him. Yeah, 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 something like that. But uh, no, nah, nah, I'm trying to work it out with my baby mama right now, man. You know what I'm saying? We, he, His baby mama set him up with the damn interview in the first place. His baby mama, Ashley, is the one who set him up with uh, uh, Queen, allegedly. I said, oh, okay. I said, but you 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 got feelings for the other one? He's like, yeah, something like that. Yeah, I do, you know. And I said, okay. I said, is she dark skinned? He said, yep. And then I went on to ask him, was he going to do a collab with somebody? And he said he had a female that sings that he was going to do a song with. 
So I don't know what she could hear because I don't know if I'm on speakerphone or not. That's when I know that there's somebody sitting there because now he's talking in codes. I say, OK, OK, OK. I said, so you looking at switching management or something? He paused and got quiet for a second. He said, um, I said, I mean, are you 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 looking at paperwork? Are you are you trying to switch? What, what is that? Uh, help me understand, because I keep feeling like and hearing that you're trying to switch management. You're looking for new representatives. He said, I'm talking to a few people about it. I'm just trying to see about it. And everybody knows he was going to CMG. Of course, he was switching management. You think Yo Gotti was going to let Rainwater get his big, goofy, square head ass up there and, and run out and plays in, in Memphis and get everybody knocked off and bring the feds with his ass? You knew damn well nobody nobody in CMG fucked with Rainwater. CMG was not about to let his big, gumby head ass up there and, and run out and plays in Memphis and get all them dudes out there knocked off. Hell no. Rainwater was fired. That's why everybody kept saying, why would Rain want to do this? Make it make sense because he was getting ready to be fired. Now, let's pause and let's go into Rainwater. I didn't even really, he was not even on my motherfucking radar. Until somebody sent me a video of him in a barber chair talking shit about me. Now, see, when a nigga trying to discredit you because you are saying some real factual shit. They're going to go out of their way. Like Ashley said, Mo3 never told me that he was seeing demons and all of that. He told me that he wanted to get more readings from her. And there you go. Rainwater is the one who kept saying, nah, he was having nightmares. I knew it because he my partner. He told me everything. Rainwater, you was trying to smash his baby mamas behind his back. You was trying to go in and smash his chicks. You was trying to smash Sean G chicks. You was you was getting the, the butt end of the deal. Nobody even wanted to touch you. None of them girls wanted you. They had to make them girls. Uh, hey, go on, and, go on and give a rain. Go ahead. Yeah, go on and give with his little lame ass. You was a square ass dude over there in the corner. You was, you was over there scared as hell in the corner with no swag, no nothing. You couldn't dress. You had no money. Mo3 used to pocket feed you. Hey, here, bro. Go, go buy you something to eat, man. Go buy your kids something. You was a do boy. Hey, fam, go buy me some swishes. Keep the change. Th that was you. If he was doing an interview. Hey, fam, go get me some water. Here, here, the honey. You was a do boy. You used to shut the fuck up when Mo3 was alive. And did. And texted to me. And I posted it. And did. You're a liar and you're a fucking snake. So then he did another interview and said, I gained 10,000 followers after Mo3 died. Now I'm able to broaden and do more things. See, that was the issue. He wanted to do certain shit that Mo3 did not want to do. And he felt like Mo3 was limiting their success. So then when you said after you went to that boy casket and you stood over Mo3 casket and you said, yeah, you famous now. Like I said before, that's not what you said. What you said was, yeah, nigga, now you famous. I made you. And Rainwater feels like he made Mo3 famous. Rainwater feel like he been putting all the groundwork in. He been the one. You forgot, bro. YouTube is what get what made Mo3 uh, pop after he died. You didn't do shit. Everybody was on YouTube exposing your goofy ass. That's how this Mo3 shit went international and all this. Everybody picked up on it because everybody was exposing your goofy ass and the rappers out here. Y'all all tried to spin the narrative as it was a jealous baby daddy. Don't forget that. Don't ever forget that shit, Rain. You ain't never been for Mo3, bro. You ain't did shit for Mo3. You won't do shit for his mama. You the reason why his mama not on the estate right now as we speak. And again, now I'm going to tell you what I told Sean G. Rainwater was dirty talking Mo3 behind his back because he was trying to fuck Mo3's bitches that he was fucking with. And he was talking about Mo3 to these bitches. And we all know that's true. Even Jossie and everybody said we ain't got to be. Oh, why you believe Jossie, man? Every so everybody lied on Rainwater. 
Everybody got the same storyline of Rainwater. Every rapper say Rainwater a janky promoter. He a con artist. That dude is, is a cap artist. All he do is start shit. Everybody he ever did business with say that dude be capping. All he do is start shit. That dude a liar. He a manipulator. Everybody who ever knew him say the same shit. He, he scandalous. Don't trust him. Nobody ever told you, hey, man, Rain a good dude. Any Unless he was paying him. Anybody who fall out with Rain be like, hey, bro, let me tell you what really went on. You see every one of his artists, Pink Pressure then exposed him. Uh, what's it, No Flaw Peach then exposed him. Dun Dun then exposed him. Number Seven then exposed him. Everybody, Mo Three then exposed him. Every artist he ever linked himself with has always had a horrible story at the end of it. Every business deal Rainwater ever signed off on, they always got a fucked up story to tell you. Nobody ever just came like, man, you know what, bro? I've been knowing Rain for like 20 years, fam. He a good dude. He put me on. Rainwater, just, he fucked everybody over and got so many people knocked off. And he just sitting up there with them big-ass piano key teeth laughing at this shit. Big-ass piano key teeth just laughing. He was telling him that Mo3 was dirty and all kind of shit. Sean G validated everything the fuck I said. He said because Rainwater was pissed we was fucking the bitches that he couldn't fuck. We would pull his bitches, but he couldn't pull ours. So we called it dirty talking. That nigga was dirty talking. I said, well, what's dirty talking? He said that meant that when we say you dirty talking, nigga, that means you, take, you saying fucked up shit about us trying to pull our bitches and he couldn't do it. So Sean G even snitching on on every, Sean G pillow talking. I mean, I, we all knew Sean G was a police ass dude. I mean, we all knew Sean G had police ass activity. This ain't nothing new. I'm just drinking my apple juice, y'all. I'm just drinking my apple juice. That's all. That's all I'm over here doing. Uh, <laughs> sounding ass. Let's continue. That's what your problem was. On top of that, the nigga said you was scary. And the crazy part is he didn't mean it in a fucked up way. He was really pissed about them jumping your motherfucking pussy ass. But you took it as another fucking dig. That's why now you're trying to climb, nigga. You have been eating off this nigga name since the time he fucking died. You keep wearing goat shirts with his motherfucking picture on it and shit. You capitalized on his murder. So for a motherfucker to say, make it make sense, bitch, that's how the fuck it makes sense. Because he was getting fired again. And if Ashley was sitting there, then she heard me ask him that. So we all knew Rainwater was getting fired. Rain, your, your, your ass was jobless. If Mo3 was still alive, your ass would be jobless when broke right now. You will be back to uh party promoting again. Mo3 was going to put your ass back to party promoting. Let's keep that shit a buck, uh, Rainwater. And he said, yes, he's in talks with other people. Now, they even stopped the, the live again and said, did she say um, these men that got killed on Expressway? How many people got shot when Mo3 got shot? I'll wait. How many people got shot when Mo3 got shot? I will wait. Three and two died. Okay. Don't worry about it. Okay. So. Man, it's starting to get a little, this is where it starts getting a little spooky. It, it starts getting a little bit spooky. You know, she she gets to looking like that, you know, some shit about to go left. So then I end the reading. We have an hour long reading just about. I believe it was an hour and we ended it. Afterwards, he started texting me and saying, Queen. And of course, I don't go by Queen anymore. My name is Petita Dean. Please don't call me that. He said, Queen, I have people lined up waiting to talk to you they want readings i'm gonna be real they, they keep telling me that to address her that look man i know her about queen i'm sorry y'all. That, that, i even said it on the phone when i was like hey queen it's just a habit when i know somebody about something it's just it's no disrespect i just it's just how it is bro once i know you by something i just know you by that 
know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I just started getting around to calling Honey Trap Honey Trap. I used to call her by a damn government name because that's what I knew her by. You know what I'm saying? So it, it ain't nothing against nobody. It's just how I am. Man. Anybody who know me, know if Ratchet know you by something, he always going to dress you as that. So let's keep it a buck. And then I called my team in Florida and told them I just read for a rapper named Mo3. Poe Theron Morris was like, what? Go back to him and see if he will do a post for you on Instagram shouting you out. So I then text him again and I said, listen, will you mind shouting me out saying that you got a reading from me? He said, I'll do you one better. If you give me unlimited readings, I'll promote you nonstop on my platforms, which is why I had talked to them, my team, excuse me, about putting on a show in Houston and seeing if he would come and if he would just make an appearance, not perform because I can be a young boy. Like, never fucking said that you bitches are pit who hired me to be his spiritual advisor that was killed. My sister said, bitch, they just killed Mo3. I said, no. Somebody else just told me that. Don't tell me that. I'm now in tears. I am at my ex-girlfriend's house. I am fucked up behind what I just found out. Why? Because I had been hearing it. After I ended the reading with him in September, I'm still with my protege at the time, Carlos. He said, queen. They are going to kill him. I said, no, Carlos. His grandmother said she's going to protect him. I got to believe that. He said, no, nah, I've seen it. They're going to kill him. I said, no, nah, they're going to try. And they killed him. And that's where I start to ask. Like, okay, At that point, you're supposed to be who you are. You should have. You know what I'm saying? You, you should have saw that coming. And Carlos seen it and you didn't. And it was just like, I don't know. That's where I start to wonder, like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. My, my mind starts to wonder a little bit. But let's continue. I still didn't know who he was until after we had this conversation, he pulls up the picture and said, this is him. I said, you fucking lying. That's Mo3. My sister just showed me him. That's the one she said had the issue with Yellow Beasy. Matter of fact, the call wasn't even over yet. Mo3 was still on the phone. I said, ain't you the one? That's you. Oh shit, my sister just. Now, do y'all feel like she lying? Do y'all feel like she knew Mo three or she is she clout chasing? Drop the gems if that part she lying. I mean, drop the gems if she telling the truth right now. Drop the caps if she lying. Y'all let me know. Show me you. She a fan of yours. Ain't you the one that got the issue with the the busy boy? He said, yeah. So then, when we get off, that's when Carlos tell me that he gonna kill him. I ain't never knocked that. I ain't never not said that. But anyway, let's keep going because I know you pick me bitches think you know something. Don't worry about it. I got time today. I've been up all night. Ain't been no sleep. Furious. Watching this live. So now I'm crying. I'm on my live and there are red motherfucking sirens going across, across, across. Um, and people are like, look in your chat, look in your chat. His sister is in the chat. His sister is in the chat. So I'm seeing all of these sirens go past and she keeps get the likes up. Y'all make sure you smash the like button. Get the likes up. Saying that was my brother. That was my brother. That was my brother. So I, I, I reach out. I say, here's my phone number. Reach out to me, reach out to me. She texts my phone. I end the live. I'm on the phone with her. She like, yeah, that's my brother. My mama's so hurt. She never said that's my friend. He's and again, that's when Jackie hits her up, and Jackie's, oh, I, I'm Mo Three's sister. You know, me and my sisters, we we family to Mo Three. That was our brother. And she never once said, oh, by the way, you know, my baby daddy, uh, my sister, baby daddy tied into this shit. We know a lot about this shit. My other sister was smashing Beto. Well, they tried to get us to set him up. That She left out a lot of the key factors of how she knew Mo3. See, Jackie ran this play. This is where Jackie comes in 
And see, Ashley sent Jackie over there because Ashley was over there smashing CMG. CMG is the one who knocked off Mo3. Uh, Kiwan White, Devin Brown, uh, Jerry Johnson, motherfucking, uh, what's old dude name? Uh, I just said his name. Jose Bodega, Yellow Beezy, and, and so on and so on. These dudes is all GRC. They all was in this damn house together, and they all was selling that lane. They all was in here in cahoots together. They plotted to get Mo3 out of there. And allegedly, Errol Spence is the big bag that was behind everything. Trap Boy Freddy was well aware that this was all going to take place. They put a lot of people that was in position, like Go Yayo, uh, Beto, and company on that freeway. Everybody was in position. DJ, uh, motherfucking uh, Smurf, Trap Boy Freddy, everybody in CM CME, everybody in... Uh, and motherfucking uh grc it's so many letters and shit y'all and mo three's camp was out there yellow uh, not yellow uh what's old dude name number seven man there's so many goddamn names y'all I'm, I'm getting confused number seven was out there motherfucking rainwater sean g everybody was in the mix on that freeway they all set his ass up let's go like my brother she said this is my brother my oh yeah robert gomez let's continue my mom is hurt behind this we are fucked up we can't believe this happened i said well if y'all his family let's do a live let's talk about it because i want people to like you know be able to shout him out i want people to really know who the fuck he was because this is fucked up i set up the live I send them the link. I get on the motherfucking live. When I get on the live, I say I'm on live with rapper Melvin Mo3 Noble family. She instantly say, no, we ain't like, we ain't his family. We, we like his family. That was my first thing. And I said to myself, what? I said, fuck that. Y'all his family. Because y'all said y'all his family. And Friends can be like family too, pretty much. As we're talking, I'm I'm listening and I'm 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 understanding, like, okay, okay, and I'm just trying to, you know, I'm trying to showcase who he is as a person. Cause again, I had only talked to him once live via text, talked to him, and then I had sent him the message in his DM the day before he got killed. I had no relationship with this man. I had just became his spiritual advisor. So I don't know. I but I do know that Mo3 also asked her about another rapper and she says it started with a B and he was out there and caught some charges in California. Mo3 asked about number seven as well in this, but he also asked about a rapper that's, you know what I'm saying, his name started with a B. And he caught charges out there in California. Hmm. Why would Mo3 be asking about that dude with the dreadlocks to start with a B in a reading? Probably because B. Uh, Y'all say the name. Y'all tell me. Who is Mo3 talking about? I almost said it. Y'all tell me. who. Yeah, there you go. Y'all saying. Why would he be asking about that man? Because he wanted to knock him off. Because Mo3 pulled up in that car and uh, the other dudes was in that black car, and then you know, some, some shots got rang off, and somebody got shot in their neck or some shit, and they they, they got end up getting paralyzed or something, and allegedly was beat old cousin, and he still been wanting some get back for that, you know what I'm saying? And they and Mo three rapped about that shit as well. I'm fucked up in my mind. My client just got killed. I'm feeling some type of way about it. So no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not reading these bitches. I'm just wanting to. Tell people how much he is fucking loved. But I know you simple bitches don't understand that. So then I'm talking to them and I'm like listening to them. And now when she's saying, well, he's like my brother, he's like my brother. And I'm realizing that Jossie was fucking him. And I'm like, wait a minute. I'm thinking to myself, but wait a minute. Has this his brothers his sisters and brothers if he fucking her that's why i said yeah <laughs> see that's what he's like you know you didn't fucked up right you see when i first asked you you said you bought the bottle of beer at 10 p.m but when i asked you again you said you bought the bottle of beer at 10 30. you know you didn't fucked up right
Look, if you ain't never seen Menace to Society, y'all like, what the fuck is he talking about? Yeah, I'm just always, look, Menace to Society, y'all. Come on now. Let's get the likes up. Let's go. Now, all sisters? Yeah. Oh. I don't want no smoke. So I'm just like still trying to understand like, well, wait a minute. They just fucking told me this is their brother and that their mama was fucked up behind this. So now I'm like, let me start to read the room. Now, I don't even hear the nigga saying let's pop bottles until the live is over and somebody sends it to me. And again, that nigga sound like rainwater on the phone. And it was rainwater on the phone. It didn't sound like him. Let's call it what it is. Rain water called them girls on that phone and said, Your partner dead. It's time to pop bottles. Everybody know that was rain. We all thought it was go yay yo at first. No, 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 no. That was rain water. Rain water called them. But never mind. So I'm like just paying attention now. Do y'all think that was rain water that said that on the, the uh sisters live when everybody was like, Man, your partner dead, it's time to pop bottles. Was that rainwater? Was rainwater at that damn watch party? Was rainwater has been acting real iffy with all the ops? I'm starting to think rainwater might have recorded the shit. Rainwater was right there watching this shit. That, that's why he got this little. He had a vendetta against Mo Three, man. Y'all, let me know. Drop the gems if rainwater. You know what I'm saying? Let, just let me know, man. Just drop the gems of the caps, man. Was Rainwater do this shit, man? We all know Rainwater, a guilty motherfucker. Let's continue. My energy is changing because I am hearing Mo3 talk to me. Now, I'm thinking he's making jokes until the end of this live, and I'm realizing he is not being funny into when he starts saying certain shit. He starts to try to validate certain shit, and I'm like, is he making jokes? I'm like, is he talking about the toenails? Is this a running joke? Like, I'm trying to figure it out. And she starts saying, no, I have long toenails. I get a toe. I'm like, oh. So now he's talking to me about her nails, getting her nails done, her nails getting done. I'm like, okay. I look. I see Jossie on the bed like this. And I'm thinking to myself, Damn, this the bitch he was liking that he was weird like that. That's crazy. She don't seem hurt at all. But okay, let's keep going. And exactly, she's supposed to be the one up there talking to you. Why is this? Uh, I was gonna call her Bob. Why is Jackie bring her homely looking ass up there? I was just trying to figure out a nice way to say some shit. Why she bring her Seely from Color Purple looking ass up there <laughs> all my life? I had to fight all my life. Let's just talk, you know, whatever. Why wasn't Jossie talking, bitch? So now, uh, you know, Jackie keeps, you know, she's doing all of the talking. And so I'm like confused because now he keeps saying, big head bitch. Big head bitch. And I'm Sophia, Seely, they all was ugly as hell. You, it don't matter which one I'm talking about. Hell, she looked like either one of them motherfuckers. That's just, Seely, Sophia, the hell, the color purple. Let's just keep it above. I'm like, I think he's teasing you about your head or something. Keep saying big head. And I'm like, not wanting to say that he's calling her bitches. For whoever that was in the chat talking about some spirit, don't do messy shit, bitch. Spirit will be messy as fuck if it's to prove a point, bitch. You don't even know because you don't do spirit work, bitch. So I'm not wanting to say everything he's saying because now he's telling me I don't fuck with these bitches. And I'm like... Yeah, and they had Jackie, little ponytail ass up there. Tiny ponytail ass. Y'all ever had a trash bag that has so much trash in it. When you try to go and, and twist that motherfucker, it just don't quite, you can't quite get that knot in there. And it got that little bob when you finally, you you know, y'all, that that's Jackie in that damn uh, live they did. That little ass uh, ponytail. So you is the one that he was talking about in the reading? Like, because he never mentioned her name. He never said Shaquilla. He never said Jocelyn. He just, I said, is she dark skinned? Look quite like a what are the mini muffins? Y'all know them little them little them little mini muffins that you get. <laughs> Who 
Who made was it? Is some hostess? I can't remember. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It looked like a mini muffin on the top of her head. It, he didn't have the chocolate fudge one. Any kids by her? No children. So I'm still trying to understand and figure it out because what he's now doing is showing me parts of the reading from his reading when he was living and he's showing it to me. And now, now I'm trying to validate. You got the tattoo on your chest? Somebody said she was up there looking like Danny Glover. Look, she did look like Lethal Weapon. <laughs> Ooh, child. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Hmm. So now I'm putting shit together and I'm trying to understand it. So now he starts talking to me about the big yellow nigga, light skinned nigga. He starts talking about the money. Now, Rainwater tried to say, no, because for real, let me just tell y'all something. No. Nigga, you are a liar. You are a snake. So like, no, it was it was like $60,000 in the car and, you know, a whole bunch of jewelry and shit. Niggas didn't even get paid. Like, nigga, what? No, for real, for real. His baby mama said it wasn't, it wasn't never no secret compartment. Sean G verified and said, yes, it is. He said the secret compartment is in the floor. That's why he had to get out and come around and try to get the gun, but the gun wasn't there. Everybody know Mo3 had a secret compartment in it. Why else was Mo3 walking to the other side of the car? You think he was trying to uh, go grab his bag? Out there? He knew what the fuck he had on the other side of that damn car. It was allegedly in the floor. That's why he had to move over there and whoop de whoop de whoop Man, everybody know Mo3 had a secret compartment and he had a gun in that car. But when he went there, somebody already took the gun. That's because he linked up with Rainwater to get that change of clothes. That's why Rainwater kept talking about that outfit. He kept spending yeah, yeah, that outfit, play a key part, man. Pay, pay attention to that outfit. Yeah, you linked up with Mo3 and took that gun out of his damn car when he went to go change at that gas station, allegedly. Because sitting in a driver's seat, you can't reach it because it's in the fucking floor. So, so now I'm looking at them. I'm like, let me just go ahead and end this motherfucking live because. Yeah, Sean G, I told y'all that dude be snitching. All these dudes in Dallas be snitching. Sean G be pillow talking and telling everything. She, she didn't told on everybody. That's why I titled this queen was snitching on everybody. She didn't snitched on everybody. Everybody who was giving her anything behind the scenes, she put it on on this one. He telling me I'm not talking to you while you talking to these bitches. And I'm like, well, we'll come back and we'll do the reading at another time. You know, because he ain't ready. They telling me he ain't ready. He ain't ready. So I, I need to do this at another time. But now I'm pissed because I'm realizing he's telling me these bitches know what happened. And I'm just trying to figure it the fuck out. Like, am I tripping? Like, what? So over the next few days, Jackie keeps texting me and calling me. Why does why is Jackie the one that was speaking for everybody? It's like Jackie really wanted this more than anybody. It's like Jackie had more invested in this than anybody. They first started texting me and calling me. I'm out on the riverbanks of Cincinnati with my ex-girlfriend outside by the river on a like a blanket chilling and shit. When they call me and they panic, talking about the live needs to come down, they sister life is in jeopardy, all kinds of shit. I say, okay, but I didn't take them all down. I saved one because Mo3 told me to save one. And I did that. That's how the fuck I even was able to go back and hear the whole popping bottles myself. Because that's why he wanted me to keep it because I didn't hear it while I was on the live. It wasn't until somebody sent that shit to me and said, did you hear this? I said, wait, is that real? So I And the thing about it is them sisters all tried to spin the narrative to my, nah, that was her. She merged the audio. See, I still to this very day don't know what the fuck she meant by she merged some audio into the live. Like, what do you mean? She would, Either she was playing something in the background or, you know what I'm saying? That's it. Like. Ain't no merge audio like y'all was literally on live. It, it whatever happened was right th then and right there. It ain't no edited shit. This ain't something that was pre-recorded. It happened live. So let's continue. I went back to the copy that I saved and I listened to it again. And sure enough, you say your homeboy dead, Jackie. We popping bottles. It sound like rainwater. 
Now, they would show motherfucking showing videos, but you never showed the video um, of the second shit that I had did, which was on rainwater. You never showed the video of me on the black shirt on my couch. Now, why is that important? It's important because I told a whole bunch of shit in both of those lives, verifiable shit in both of those motherfucking lives. The one I did with on Rainwater because he kept fucking with me. Now, I was really hot this rising because Skull was like, I don't know if Queen will come over and tell me because I said a whole bunch of shit about her kids. Yeah, why did you say shit about my kids? Because I don't know you, Chris. I ain't never talked to you, Chris. I ain't never said nothing disrespectful about your kids. None of that. But it's always all right when a motherfucker disrespect my children. And motherfuckers was laughing about that shit in the chat. Salute to Dainty and Pris. I don't feel like I've seen you in a minute. But salute to you, Dainty and Pris. Your 20th super on the live stream. I appreciate that honey bun. Honey bun. Won't you do some for me? I appreciate you for that honey bun. Salute, salute. But that's all right, though. Because, see, I don't even play them kind of games. Do you understand what I'm saying? So as soon as I say something about my kids, it's like, yeah, she a damn machine because she was. Oh, fuck you, pick me, bitches. Don't say nothing about my motherfucking children. You had no right to say nothing about my kids. You said a whole bunch of shit. But when Rainwater seen that motherfucking broom that you was laughing at, yeah, that bitch falling behind her sweeping the floor. Rain said, nah, I know what that is. I know the fuck you do. Y'all laugh at a whole bunch of dumb, different dumbass shit because y'all fucking silly. I don't do silly shit. I don't do silly shit. It was a whole bunch of calling me all kind of bitches and hoes last night, and I'm going to let you eat that. I ain't mad about it. Don't worry about it. But I definitely told a whole bunch of shit. Let's be clear. The nigga on the motherfucking expressway, the tall yellow nigga with the motherfucking tattoos the skull cap and the fucking dreads bro is the nigga who called my phone and who is this listen who is she saying was the tall light skinned dude with the tattoos on his neck and dreadlocks and a ski mask this is who she's saying and they called her phone AOF Key don't got dreadlocks, y'all. Kelly Mack, you might be on to something. Let's continue. His name starts with a B. Oh, his name starts with a B, y'all. Let's stop right there. His name starts with a B. He's a light-skinned guy, tall, dreadlocks, tattoos on his neck. Called her phone. Who, who is she talking about, y'all? I know. I said the name to Sean G. He knew exactly who the fuck I was talking about. It. And you know why Sean G knows who he's the Sean G know. But let's continue. And he couldn't say shit. He said, mm. Mm. Because Sean G know. Because Sean G know it's active smoke with him. Sean G know it's real smoke. Let me be clear about something. Even motherfuckers that act like they was their man friend is all in on his murder. This was a very, very high planned plot murder and everybody had a reason to do it but one and he tried to convince me he had nothing to do with it there were multiple shooters on that motherfucking expressway do you think that that nigga with the the motherfucking mask on that everybody see pictures of was the nigga that was shot all the people that had all the bullets going you thought he was the only one shooting really and I even said that there was more than one shooter on that freeway. Allegedly, there's more. Whatever they saying happened didn't happen because there was somebody behind that eighteen wheeler. Allegedly, mm. whatever happened, I'm not sure what. I don't. To be real, I don't know what the fuck happened on that freeway. I just know what they saying. That ain't what happened. Mm. Well. Hmm. I told you before the shooter called my motherfucking phone and asked me if we had a problem. And I said, do we have a problem? He said, no, nah, we ain't got no problem. I said, no, nah, we ain't got no problem. The and the person that she's talking about with the B is Beto. Okay, y'all, Beto is the one who called her phone. Remember, Beto was trying to get me knocked off. Y'all don't remember this shit? She even, remember when she was trolling me? She was like, Beto, I got some money for your pockets to go knock off Ratchet. Because Beto told her that he was looking for me. 
Y'all don't remember this shit? I remember everything. See, I did an interview with Beto and shit. You think I think me and Beto are friends? Fuck no. I know what the fuck it is. Beto was trying to look for me and try to get me lined up. And he tried to, you know what I'm saying? That, that's why she was trolling me with the Beto shit. Like I said, all is forgiven. I ain't ducked shit out here. I'm still out here. Beto ass caught fed charges. Let's continue. Nigga hung up in my face and again. His name started with a B. And now, from what I understand, he's in California in jail or something. He got picked up on a completely different charge here recently. And that should confirm to y'all who she's talking about. I told y'all who it was. I told you before the shooter called my motherfucking phone and asked me if we had a problem. And I said, do we have a problem? He said, no, we ain't got no problem. I said, no, we ain't got no problem. The nigga hung up in my face and again. His name started with a B. And now from what I understand, he's in California in jail or something. He got picked up on a completely different charge here recently. And she said the shooter called her phone. So Queen is saying Beto killed Mo3. Now I must say this. I had a conversation with somebody before. Starts with a B. And this person gave some information that led me to believe they definitely know exactly what the fuck happened. And I gave y'all the information. I just can't. It's a private conversation I'm going to have with her before I, I can't say too much more than what I just said. I'm just going to leave it right there. You could think I'm lying, cloud chasing. But when I you saw when I showed earlier, when I talked to her and I told her what you talking about, I know what you're talking about because I had a conversation with these people. Now, if she is who she says she is, she knows what the fuck I'm talking about. And the look on her face told me she got kind of shook. That's why she was like, it's a private conversation. Yeah, I know. Because you know that I know what the fuck I'm You know I know what I'm talking about. Let's go. And his name is not Kiwan. Mm. But see, Rainwater thing is this. He wants to point in everybody's direction and give you 20 fucking narratives so you don't look at him. It was the music guy that he has done songs with the best friend the manager and the backup dancer and the other dude that all put in on this hit it was the music guy that he has done songs with the best is that boosie is that boosie the music guy he's done songs with could that be boosie best friend Best friend could that be Rainwater? The manager. Oh no no no! The best friend be who? Who is the who is the best friend? Sean G. Sean G. Be saying he is best friend. So was that Sean G. And you said the manager. Who is the best friend? Who is the best friend, y'all? Because the manager will be Rainwater. Who is the best friend? I'm gonna wait for y'all to catch it. They saying Sean G. Is it Sean G. Is that seven? I don't think Mo three and seven were best friends. I'm gonna be real with you. I I definitely do not think Mo three and Seven of best friends. Somebody said Willie. They said uh Boosie, Sean G, Rain. Okay, so we got Boosie, Sean G, and Rain right now. Boosie, Boosie, Sean G, and Rain. Somebody said I'm thinking Willie. Nah, I'm thinking it gotta be. Shit. I don't know. Let's continue. And the backup dancer, Trap Boy Freddy, and the other dude. And is the other dude Beto? Is that who you saying the other dude is? Somebody said Sir Tez. Man, man, man. That all put in on this hit. Rainwater told y'all. I was on the phone with him. I heard this. I heard this. He said, oh, Rain, they shooting at me. They shooting at me. And I told him where to go turn by turn again. How the fuck would you know that in the midst of bullets flying, he flying in the car, driving, trying to get away? You, excuse me, so called on the motherfucking phone telling him where to turn, turn by turn. How the, what are you, a GPS nigga? How the fuck you do that? Somebody said number seven, Sean G, Rain, Beto, and Trap. 
Now that I agree with. Now uh, you, I, I think we can replace Boosie with with Seven, as far as the dude he was doing songs with, the rapper he was doing songs with. That could possibly really be Seven. So we it could be Seven. You might be right about that. It might be Seven, Sean G, Rainwater, Beto, and Trap Boy. I wait on it. He's in interview saying that. I'll wait on it. Now you tried to clown me on Skulls Live last night, not to forget that I just saw your ass a few months, months ago, some months ago. Remember when you and Ratchet was up there and you offered me $500 to come up on a platform? When She's talking about Rainwater right now because Rainwater was on my platform talking about he got $500 for Queen, whoop de whoop whoop You was over there saying Queen is the truth. She told the truth about a lot of shit, except for when she tried to bring me in it. That's interesting. That's interesting. I told the truth about everything. That's validatable, bitch, because that's on Ratchet's live. I'm sure he didn't delete it. I sure as hell didn't. I sure as hell still got it up, Rainwater. You gotta be hey Kyle Queen up here, man. I got five hundred dollars for that. Not to my she she told me about my 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 my, my partner. Not saying I got five hundred dollars for not saying she true. I mean she was right on on, on point except everything she talked about me though. You know what I'm saying you know what I'm saying. See at the end of the day, at the end of the day, my partner. See at the end of the day, you was on the live and said Queen is the fucking truth. And then Ratchet said, yeah. And then you said, yeah, but she not when she came to trying to put me in it. Ratchet said. Yeah, she was cap on that. No, I'm not, nigga. Nigga. Say it again with your chest. No, I'm not, nigga. Tell these people the truth. You was getting fired. And you, like you said, he was my biggest artist. Nigga, he's your only artist. And you was the fuck out of there, pussy boy. So then I did the live and I did a reading on rainwater and I told a whole bunch of shit from the motherfucking clothing line, the, the, the studio and shit, the label you was trying to build. Everything was validatable. Shit. I didn't even know. So then to answer the question to the little bitch that was in the chat that said, didn't, um, didn't queen domain apologize to Jocelyn Banks. Let me tell you something. It was shit that I had never seen that them bitches were saying about me. So then I got in my motherfucking bag, bitch, and I started telling shit. And if you was on the motherfucking live, bitch, I started reading and I started telling most shit about that night when that nigga Mo3 was at her motherfucking house. And what happened? What happened? If you was on a fucking chat, bitch, what happened? What happened was she came into the chat and said, that's not me to stalking you. Ain't nobody told you that somebody said that was me. That ain't me stalking you. Man, 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 man. I said Rain is in the chat. Rain, where you at? Because they've been on your top. Rain, where you at, Rainwater? Let me drop the link for Rainwater, man. Let me drop the link for Rainwater. Because Rain, it seems like you want some attention. We got to chop it up about you, Rain. Because, hold on, Rain. Well, let, me, let me go ahead and drop this link for you, man. Call up in here, Ryan. Cause you you've been getting exposed for way too long, man. We know you set the play up. Everybody in here know you set this play up, Ryan Water. Hit the link, Ryan. The link is right there. Hit the link. Let me pin it to the top of the chat so you can't say your your, your big teeth ass didn't see it. Hold on. All right, there you go. Let's get back to this. Hit the link, Ryan. Do we have? Do we, why you want the problem? I don't want no smoke. I said because. I don't know when you said, she said, I ain't said nothing about you in over a year. I said, I don't know when you said it. I saw the shit tonight, so I'm addressing it tonight. She said, I don't want no smoke. Just leave me and my mom and them out of it. I'm sorry, I apologize. I said, then I apologize to them for saying shit about her mama. I ain't never apologized for the shit I said because I mean what the fuck I said. I said, I'm apologizing about what I said about her fucking mom. Because she apologized. And I let it go. 
But I know you pick me bitches don't know what a woman look like, what you're looking at. Don't worry about it. So let me keep on addressing the bullshit, right? So then they played the other video of me going off. Now I'm going off. They like, oh, well, how did she get from this video to this video? How I got there was over the next few days, Jackie kept texting my motherfucking phone and calling my phone. And then I was seeing slick shit that was being said about me. And, and, and she said that, oh, the detective had called her mama and told her mama who did it, who the light-skinned dude was that I was talking about, told her exactly what happened and all this shit. Now I'm putting shit together that was... You see, Rain don't want to hit that link. You don't want to hit this link. Rain, you know we own to you. The day is getting closer. The day is approaching. 2024 is here, Rain. You've been running scared. You won't. I, and, and even your homegirl even was, was saying this day, you won't even come outside. You scared, right? They got you spooked in the house right now. You don't know. And then when your boy got lined up, you know, he he's connected to that blogger over there who people just keep dying around this blogger. Y'all better stay the fuck away from this little blogging ass dude from Garland. I'm just saying people just keep dying around him. All them people in Memphis died on this platform. Uh, people out here in Texas, Dallas the area dying on, 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 I'm saying around this dude. Remember when uh, Big Big D the mogul got got uh, knocked off, and they said some sh some strange shit happened out of town. But you know what I'm saying? he got knocked off, and Rainwater ain't came outside since because he know he next allegedly. Said to me by Mo three that day in that reading, reason why I didn't repeat the shit that was being said. Now I'm getting very, very pissed because I know you bitches is lying and setting it up. So now I have already tapped in over the last few days and I know exactly what the fuck happened. I wasn't going to speak on it because I understood how many players in a game was actually fucking happening and niggas was getting ready to die. So I wasn't going to speak on it at all until these bitches kept saying my motherfucking name. So then I had got up that next morning and saw a whole bunch of shit and I started a live video and I went the fuck off. I don't give a fuck about nobody calling me Cisco, bitch. Suck my pussy hole. I wouldn't give a fuck, bitch, about all the different Cisco, this Cisco. Then y'all niggas just pick me niggas and pick me bitches and you want to be so into the game you want to be so nigga my motherfucking name rings bells bitch i am a star ho i don't want to be shit i ain't got to try to climb on somebody else's clout bitch i stand on my clout man man somebody said tender dick everybody know rain tender dick everybody in the building know he he uh, now he goes live and I remember one of the last interviews he did. He said, Oh, here everybody know I'm tender dick. Yeah, I'm tender dick as hell. Yeah. But he did, man, when I said that to him, boy, what the fuck is you talking about? He was so hot. You know why? Because Mo 3 told him he was tender dick. Sean G told him he was tender dick. Everybody around him said, You tender, bro. You tender behind these little, these little strippers. You really be, you really be caught up with these strippers, fam. You be falling in love with these little groupie. Like for real, bro. We be tossing these girls up. But you be in the back making love. Oh, you be in the back making love to him, Rain. You even got a stripper pregnant. One of your babies is, is, a, is a stripper baby. You got a stripper baby. Everybody in Dallas didn't hit your baby mama, Rain. I, I'm the one who showed who she was. I showed your baby mama she worked at Ecstasy. You got a stripper baby. <sighs> yeah. My name rings bells in the music and... The film industry, bitch. People know who the fuck I am, bitch. And it wasn't because of Mo 3, bitch. You want your name to ring bells because of Mo 3, bitch. I ain't, I ain't, that ain't me. That ain't me. Don't worry about it. So then Ratchet asked me to come up on his platform, which I did twice. He asked me about two separate niggas. The one time I came up there, Sin City Raps was up there on the platform. He asked me about two niggas. Before I could say anything, I heard Mo3 step in and say, don't say a word on them. Those niggas are real shooters. Leave it alone. And I did just that. 
And you know why? Do you know why he told me not to say anything? Because us niggas, because one of them is the shooter who killed him. And that's the nigga who called my phone. Mm. If you know, then you know. Let's listen to that again. Leave it alone. Thing I heard Mo3 step in and say, don't say a word on them. Those niggas are real shooters. Leave it alone. And I did just that. And you know why? Do you know why he told me not to say anything? Because those niggas, because one of them is the shooter who killed him. And that's the nigga who called my phone. And she's talking again about Beto. She keeps talking about Beto. And she's saying Beto killed Mo3. And she's saying Beto called her phone and whoopty, whoopty, whoop. He told her to leave it alone. Mo3 said leave it alone because they real shooters. And I know that to be true. I'm telling you right now. Oh, Beto and them some real shooters for real, for real. Them dudes ain't, they ain't nobody to play with. A lot of people won't even say Beto name because Beto get in the mix for real. So I ain't I ain't on here to tear down nobody legacy or what they didn't did in the streets. Beto most definitely is somebody who definitely put in some work in Dallas. And if she's saying I, I don't know if Mo3 really came to her and said it or not, but I'm just gonna say that's true though. So I, I know Beto's a real shooter. So that, that is true. You know why? Do you know why he told me not to say anything? Cause us niggas. Because one of them is the shooter who killed him. And that's the nigga who called my phone. Mm. If you know, then you know. Mm. If you know, then you know. But you niggas don't know. Because in real life, that nigga didn't fuck with none of you niggas and wouldn't have fucked with none of you niggas. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. So then that was that. But it's been so much shit said about Quetzita. You niggas, I wanted to make sure that I addressed everything. Did I miss anything? Excuse me, anybody that was watching the live last night, did I miss anything? Because they was even saying, oh, maybe she could tell us about Young Dolph. Well, niggas, I guess you missed two of the videos I did because I told you about it already. I told you about it already. See, the one day that I did the live and I did that reading, talking about and telling about motherfucking rainwater, right after that, see, he ended up calling Sko. And him and Sko had a whole motherfucking discussion. And that's when Sko started posting my videos, talking shit about me, talking about my kids. Because he got him on payroll. I've been telling y'all that that pussy ass dude been on payroll. That dude been on payroll. And to and to answer everybody's question about when I challenged that dude to to uh, get in the boxing ring, that dude's so fucking scared. He wanted he he. Blocked me away from talking to he won't even talk to me no more. That dude's scary because I'm gonna beat the hell out of him in the ring for money, allegedly. But let's continue. So that means you picked me too. That nigga run you. You was talking so great about Mo3 last night. You never even spoke to his mama in your chat. At least she said she was his mama. I heard you speak to Jossie Banks' mama several times, though. Mo three mama was in the chat too. Didn't hear you speak to her not one time. Cause see, it ain't about that. Y'all don't give a fuck about Mo three. Y'all give a fuck about clicks, likes, and and hopefully somebody watching. You don't give a fuck. That's fine with me. Leave my motherfucking name out of it. Leave my motherfucking name out of it. All you niggas are fucked up. Rainwater, again, you will never be more than what the fuck you are right now. You're a clown. These niggas laugh at you. You always talk about dark-skinned women. That's because we don't want you. Man, man, she reading rain like a book right now. 
She reading that man like a like a, a novel right now. You not hurting nobody's feelings. You are lame. Not one bitch will ever be secure ever dealing with you, nigga, because you'll get your ass whooped. Who you going to save her? You can't. I'm going to be real, Rain. If it came down to it, bro, you ain't saving nobody. Though. You're going to get rolled over. You're going to get rolled over and, and, and stepped on. We've seen you in action. We know the only person that you had a chance with was Sertes, and he can't fight either. That dude was just throwing punches in the wind. He didn't know what to do. You... That's probably the only person you was going to put in the blender is Sir Tez. But other than that, Rain, you're going to get cleaned up. You got beat up by Yellow PC. You'll always be that nigga that got beat up by Yellow PC. <laughs> sip it again, Queen. Go ahead and sip it again. There was 251 murders committed in 2020 in Dallas alone. And that was the most murders that had ever taken place in Dallas in one year. And a lot of those murders happened in November, in December. Not everyone, but a lot of them happened in November and in December. And that was just saying that before 2021 came in. You have tried to run around here and discredit me, and you can't. I saw people in the chat saying, her shit ain't never accurate. Who? I predict world events. I predict children. Why? Because Trap Boy Freddy didn't get killed? Uh -uh. Again, I said what I said on that. My motherfucking work speaks for itself. I ain't got to, I ain't got to show both. I ain't got to go on nobody's platform and say, let me read you to prove something. Why would I ever do that? Why would I ever do that? My work speaks for itself. I predict shit. I prophesy shit. The little bitch in the chat last night over at Skull's house say, I don't fuck with her. That bitch evil. She deal with that evil shit. You mean you sitting amongst all these demons talking about a woman they don't know and her children? Me? Saying the most vile and evil shit on top of I'm sure you sucking a nigga dick who sell dope to his people? You mean that evil shit, bitch? And by that, she's talking about Calvin because we know he sell dope. I'm going to be honest, the dudes sell dope and, and the feds are well aware of it. So it's just a matter of time before that dude goes down. Because everybody in Dallas know that Calvin sells dope. Calvin Petty sells dope. We all know it. Everybody in Dallas know that shit. Who did I snitch? I don't give a damn. Let's continue. You mean how you go and you talk about people? Judgmental bitch that you don't know? Ain't that what your Bible say don't do? Evil judgmental bitch? Y'all niggas are clowns. Clowns. And nothing you say ever matters. I change the world. I predict world events. I have changed lives. I have touched lives. I make a difference. My motherfucking footprint is all over the globe. Because, see, I have clients from Ireland to Australia, Africa, England, America. People watch me in India. Motherfucking uh, Sweden. (laughs) 
I don't know why they remind me of that dude who was like, you remember the little the little chubby kid who was like, why you eat the motherfucking sandwich cold? <laughs> Y'all know the book I'm talking about the dude who had the little bandana on. <laughs> oh shit! Why you didn't eat the sandwich cold, man? See, I have a footprint, and your legacy is messy shit on the internet that can be wiped away, and you never even existed. Your claim to fame is what? I never got into the work that I do to be famous, to get a click or a like. You pick me, bitches. Some of you welfare fucking recipient ass bitches is sucking dirty dick, hoping to get a motherfucking joint. Go sit your pick me, dumb motherfucking uneducated, keep popping babies, burning stinky, nasty ass pussy, dirty neck holes. Sit the fuck down fucking with me. Child. <laughs> she she came to you know what I'm saying she came to chew bubble gum and fuck people up and I think she fresh out of bubble gum at this point. Sit down fucking with me. <laughs> My motherfucking rent. You couldn't even afford for one month, bitch, because you can't even afford yours, and it's $125. My rent just got raised, bitch. I now pay $2,100. Hold on, let me sip some water to that. Hold on, y'all. Let me, let me. I had to sip it like her. Hold on, let's continue. You bitches are bums. And I understand, because I've been there, bitch. I done been on Section 8 in welfare, bitch. I didn't even suck the dick, bitch. I get it, but I had... Whoa. Whoa. Queen. TMI. You just be, Sometimes you just get a little too loose. It's like you be right on point, then you just like uh, veer over, over to the left to get in the left lane. Get back in the right lane. Let's talk. Let's stop that. Stop that. Had more in store for me, and I understand you bitches don't know what that is. Hey, it was the 80s. Everybody was doing <laughs> Look at that. You niggas either. Your claim to fame is talking about a well-known, successful bitch that you ain't never even met. That's your legacy. My granddaughter will be able to stand on a mountaintop and say who the fuck her motherfucking lovey is, bitch, because I made a difference in this life. I brought up the community while you niggas are tearing it down. What you say about me means nothing ever. Did I miss anything that I need to um, address? I think you addressed from it last all. night. Did I miss anything? Did I miss anything from last night? Let me search my mind because it was a lot. Mm. If I did, it don't matter. It don't matter. It don't matter. Again, I never even knew he was talking about Shaquilla until I talked to Shaquilla. Let me state that. I talked to Shaquilla after I did the live with the bank sisters. And that's when I found out that she sings. She doesn't have children. And that they had things going on. He was kind of back and forth between her and the baby mama. I don't have nothing to lie about, bro. Lie for what? I'm about to go lie the fuck down because I'm tired. And I wanted to make sure that I got this shit off my motherfucking chest. Now, you can say what you want about me and my kids. But again, bitch. My kids have done more in this life than any of you niggas. Hi, Queen. Who child? That lady. Who child? It is loose in the Mo3 case. I told you it's going to take a left turn in this motherfucker. That Mo3 case took a left turn quick because you got people over there arguing and shit like I showed y'all earlier. 
you can't make this type of shit up right here. You can't make this shit up. Come outside, ho ass nigga. Listen, you, 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 the same you, person, you, you the same person that said Fish somebody told you Sweet, Pea, Sweet Pea was in a meeting about killing three. Come on. Sweet Pea did not kill three. You said that, bitch. You said no, you, she had I, I got the recording. Jackie! Jackie! Y'all bringing up my... Y'all bringing up my... He lied, Jackie! Yeah. Mm -hmm. You think I finna lace my cousin up, uh, bitch? Uh, I got the recording. Yeah, she already, I got she already, Jackie! She already been recording like two or three weeks ago. Yes, uh, bitch! Let, yeah! Let, yeah, let, yeah let, yeah, I knew you was a snake. I knew your ass was a snake. Bitch, you never snake me, ho ass nigga. I've been telling her. I knew your bitch ass. You see what he do, Jackie? He trying to get on the panel and he trying to. She said, "Be careful what y'all say." I got a lie to say it's you when it's really him. He do, Jackie. He trying to get on the panel and he trying to lie and say it's you. You see what he do, Jackie? He trying to get on the panel and he trying to lie and say it's you when it's really him. Bitch, I'm not dumb, ho. I make you think I'm slow, ho. Yeah, she let me hear Ain't the recording. Ain't like that slow, I mean, bitch. They been heard that so recording three, up. four weeks ago, she nigga. Come outside, ho ass this, nigga. Listen, listen. You, Fuck you, you, the same bitch. You, you the same person that said somebody told me Sweet, Sweet Pea was in a meeting about killing three. Come on. Sweet Pea did not kill three. You said that, bitch. You said no, that. I got the recording. Jackie! Jackie! Y'all bringing up my... He lied, Jackie! You think I finna lace my cousin up, bitch? I got the recording. Yeah, she already, okay. she already, Jackie. she already been recording like two or three weeks ago. Yeah, Jackie, Jackie. Like, goddamn girl, shut the fuck up. That, could you imagine being next to that everyday girl? Please get off the internet. Turn your damn phone off. We all see why you single. I think everybody in the building know why exactly why you single. Damn girl, get your loud ass off the internet. Ain't nobody dealing with that bullshit. Ooh, child. Ain't you still married? You need to be going to get your damn marriage uh, taken care of. You still married, still doing the same shit. You old and loose. Get your old loose ass off the internet with this shit. We getting tired of this shit. Thought you was quitting YouTube. Get your goofy ass on. Yes! Bitch, yeah, she yeah. ain't been recording like two or three weeks. Yeah, bitch, I got the recording. Yeah, she already, okay. she already, yeah, she yeah. already, she already, Jackie. Come on, tell her, Jackie. Like, you said that, bitch. You said no, you, she had I, I got the recording. Jackie, 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 Bitch, you never snake me, ho ass right. nigga. I've been telling her. I knew your yeah, bitch ass. You, well, been, uh, you bitch. see what he do, Jackie? Hold up, he trying to get on the panel be and he trying to lie and say it's you when it's really him. Bitch, I'm not dumb, ho. Mm -hmm. I make you think I'm slow, ho. Yeah, she let me hear Ain't the that like slow, two, I mean, bitch. Jackie, they been heard that so recording three, up. four weeks ago, Just nigga. Man, 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 man. Could you imagine that being your chick? And she doing all this shit on it. I mean, ain't no way in hell. Ain't no way in hell. I'm just saying, let's, let's keep it a big buck, y'all. Let's keep this all the way a big buck. In other news surrounding the Mo3 case, what's going on here? Let's look at this. Wesley Lewis, 28, a.k.a. Hot Boy Wes, was sentenced to 50. 10 years in prison by a judge after Lewis pleaded guilty to 10 counts alleged in six separate indictments. Lewis pleaded guilty to two enhanced counts of assault, family violence, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, robbery, unauthorized use of a vehicle, endangering children, criminal mischief uh, of more than $2,500, and theft from a person in offenses. Ranging from 2020 to 2023, the judge sentenced <coughs> the judge sentenced Lewis to 15 years in prison on multiple counts and 24 months in prison on the state jail felony offenses. Uh, ordering the sentences to be served concurrently, Lewis must serve 
at least seven and a half years in prison before he is uh, before he is eligible for parole. According to court records, Lewis was arrested in February 2020 after he allegedly tried to run the mother of his children off the road with two of his children in the car. Witnesses reported Lewis, who was driving a silver sedan on Interstate 35, tried to run a Jeep carrying the woman and the two children into a cement barrier. Hot Boy Wes is out of here, y'all. Hot Boy Wes is out of here, y'all. That boy, Hot Boy Wes, is out of here. 15 years in prison for hot boy west i know a lot of people been waiting on this news to drop hot boy west has been a uh, well he's been arrested but he's been sentenced to 15 years in prison y'all and he got to do at least seven and a half years of that 15 year sentence so you won't be seeing hot boy west till about at least after what 2031 so yeah he gonna be gone for a minute you see him by 2031 2032 Maybe 2035 somewhere. Hot Boy West is up out of here, y'all. I'm pretty sure y'all probably won't see him for about like eight to ten years. So Hot Boy West is done, y'all. He said God is good. Hot Boy is not a good name in prison. Well, he going to be a hot boy in there. So damn Gucci about to have nothing but women on the new 1017. Every one of Gucci artists, he either get them locked up or he get them uh, lined up. One of the two. He coming out hot booty sweat. <laughs> he has a cool down. This too much. They said when he gets out, though, he needs to relocate. Man, that dude going to be so he ain't even going to be on by the time he get out. When he get out, he just going to be broke. He ain't have enough money to sustain a 15 year sentence in prison. Hot boy West done. So he out of here. Beto done. All these dudes done, man. Dallas rap scene is over. The DFW rap scene is over. They said he ice cold now. Yeah, he ain't hot. He looked like he was crying on this mug shot, too. It looked like he was crying. It looked like he knew it was over when he got arrested for this. Boy, you tried to run your baby mama off the road. What you thought was going to happen, uh, hot boy? Don't cry now, thug. It's over. What you crying now for, man? You had it all, man. You assigned a Gucci. You thought it was all sweet. But, hey, it's over. You know what I'm saying? 15 years, buddy. 15 years, hot boy, Wes. You got 15 years to think about it, man. You know what I'm saying? You might get out in about seven and a half, eight, man. Maybe. Maybe. We're going to see about that, though. I don't know, Ratchet Gang. What y'all think about Hot Boy West, man? We almost been on live three hours, man. Well, I gave y'all some extra content tonight. Make sure y'all show some love, man. Make sure y'all smash these likes. We should be at 1,000 likes by now. We got 245 on the screen. I appreciate y'all for the donations. I appreciate all the cash apps, super chats, super stickers. I appreciate everybody in this building for popping out, showing out tonight, man. We appreciate it all. Hey, it's much love. Make sure y'all go subscribe to Sapphire's Cosina. Drop the link to Sapphire's Cosina. Drop the link to Chat Trap Official. Chat Trap is like, I think, 50 subscribers away from hitting uh 10K. So can y'all get Sapphire over there at Chat Trap Official to 10K? Can everybody in the building go subscribe to Chat Trap Official? Drop the link to Chat Trap in the chat as well. We only like, uh, I think, 50 subscribers away from getting 10K over there. So get the likes up. Make sure y'all subscribe to Sapphire's Cosina. Make sure y'all subscribe to chat trap official subscribe to ratchet tv media hey we finna get the fuck up out here follow me on tiktok instagram uh facebook all that shit man you know what i'm talking about i love y'all ratchet Streets gang i'm out you know what i'm talking about
belly jump. Said daddy got hit with the pump. Hit with the pump. It's in my lap at all time, nigga. And ain't nothing but that fuck boy to get it, hit, nigga. Cause y'all niggas is a motherfucking hoe. But don't want to rep us all your motherfucking clothes. The shoes ain't tight and your phone ass is show. So bend your ass over like a bitch, it's a pole. I make my fucking music for the boys with the old. The old school pole in the strip club. Just smoked 
the whole zip Too much ice on me, damn I gave the bitch the chips Found out that he wasn't real, this shit bought me the tips Found out her booty wasn't real, and I didn't give a damn What's that on your back, girl, that thing look like a ham She said she get it from her mama, I said bitch you lying A hundo for my time, they like how I shine Hey, Long hair, she don't care Bitch and say he bipolar hey, what you Rich nigga yeah, yeah. Bad bitch yeah, yeah. You can't tell me shit what? I don't listen no, no. Money counter hey. Lot of hundred hey. Me and the blunt bitch just smoked a whole onion hey. Hey.